Hey, Blacksit family, Blacksit family, Blacksit family. Um, how are you? This is an impromptu live. Um, I wanted to, um, I wanted to actually market this um, this week, but I have had such a hectic um, schedule this week that it's um, incredibly um, hard. Uh, it's been incredibly hard to do so. So um, once again, I'm sorry, but I do do a lot of this. At as a pre-record, because uh, I know that many people watch it um, afterwards. And um, so um, I'm hoping that you can hear me quite well. If you can't, then um, let me know if you're having a problem um, with anything. So just like to say hello to our first Black family who are here with us, which is Tuko. So I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Tuko Kamoja. Greetings, Niancho Kajavi. Thank you. And to Cedric Money. Hello. Can you both give me a little um, sound check and well wish a seven? Hello. Hello. Um, greetings, Black Sit family. Yeah, I hope you can hear me, Joe A. Um, greetings, 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 greetings. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so, so much. And um, I'm here to talk about a challenging subject today, a difficult subject today. One that I, um, in, one, in, in one sense, I wish I didn't have to do, but in, in another sense, it has to be said because so much has happened, like in the last week, that I can't help but talk about it. So, um, you know, uh, sounds good. Thank you, Candyman. Thank you, um, Joe A. Thank you, Judah One. And thank you, Wawisha. I'm glad you can see and hear me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And I'm going to say Jedda Jeff, Jedda Jeff, Jedda Jeff, Jedda Jeff, which is Wolof for thank you, Abaraka, Abaraka, which is also in Mandinka for thank you. And I'm going to say Imitakati, 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 which is um, in Jola for thank you. And Jarama, 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 which is Fuller for thank you. So giving thanks to you all today, just want to say a quick hello to Isaac Wren and also to Joyce Box. Now I'm going to get in on the subject, but I want you to join me. So I'm going to keep putting um, the address um, in the comment section. I was told, I got some positive feedback that I don't do it enough and that's why people haven't been in. So I'm going to put a chat, I'm also going to put it in a private chat, and I'm also going to put it on the screen. So that way, if you'd like to join me on this subject, um, then you can, because it's a very important subject today, yeah? I want to talk about enemies of the race, yeah? Obviously, you have to be quite careful with um, things that are said nowadays because of censorship and other sensibilities. And uh, one of the sensibilities that I have to also consider is enemies of the race, who often enough, you know, let's just say back for the other side. And um, in doing so, um, they ensure that they sound the alarm uh, for people who are uh, lovers of their own race. And I am a lover of my own race. I am a lover of my own people. I am a lover of my own culture. I'm a lover of myself, my blackness, my Africanness, my identity. And so I'm, I'm a lover of uh, Africa. And so as such, um, you know, I, I, I come under fire a lot because um, I am very um, outspoken when it comes to um, our people. And that's why I'm back in Africa. So if you've not... Um, Hi, Judah. <laughs> hey, Judah One. You have actually. Judah One has been um, uh, one of the original Black Sit um, family members. So I want to thank you and big you up because you've always been with us, even when people have been, um, you know, doing their best to try to um, destroy what we have built. So I, I want to thank you for being an ardent, you know, Black Power uh, 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 fighter, soldier with us out there. And uh, Wendy Green. Big precious to you, you know we love you. And um, also uh, Ruby Harper as well, and DARPA Chief. Now, 
I'm going to get to it. Sorry about that if I hurt your ears. I'm really sorry. But I have to talk on this. I have to talk on this. And I'm not going to be silenced. And I'm not going to be quiet. And why am I not going to be quiet? If you are new to this channel and you've never caught a, a live before um, from Black Sit, what is Black Sit? Okay, let, let me explain what Black Sit is. Black Sit is all about your emancipation, your mental emancipation, your cultural emancipation, yeah? Your reunification back home with your people, back in your country, back into your place of origin, back to Africa, okay? It's about your return home, it's about your relocation, repatriation, reconnection. And we try to do everything that we can to share and help you with that process, whether it's showing you opportunity for development, opportunities for land, opportunities for you to move wholesale and come here and move into a home, um, whether it's farming um, opportunities, agriculture, business opportunities, investment opportunities, whether it's showing you culture, different places, things you can do, things you can enjoy, things that you can eat, things you can make, things you can drink all things Africa. And so this is what Black is about. My name is Nyancho Kajabi. And um, I'm here um, today as your host. And um, uh, with, um, I'm not sure if my brother's joining me, but we are gonna have a couple other guests um, joining us, hopefully. Um, Seth, did you do it for me, hon? Are you up? Mm? I'm just checking that the invoice was sent. So, um, okay, someone's asking me um, what prompted me to talk about this topic. Um, I was fed up about four or five, no, no, more than that, maybe tens about the right number. I was fed up about a number of things that I have seen this week, witnessed this week, heard this week. Um, happening within our own community, things that we are doing which are self-destructive to ourselves. Yeah, I mean, not only that, I'm, I think I'm a, a walking, talking, uh, living um, example. I can testify to what my own people have done to me because I'm trying to help. You see? And so that's the reason why I'm talking about this. But now this is not so much about me. This is about the, the, the bigger picture. So there's a number of things that I saw um, happening. Um, number one, um, after the elections here, it's going around and around in a circle. But anyway, after the elections here, um, there was a, a, a small skirmish. Nothing big, absolutely a small group um, of people which had um, a gathering. And so, and this gathering, uh, in order to prevent it from becoming agitated, it, it was broken up. But let me explain something to you. The election was fantastic. It was peaceful. It was lovely. It was fun. It was enjoyable. The celebrations were lasting all the way till last Saturday. There were big concerts in the villages. Food, fun was had by so many people. But was that shown really by the mainstream press? No. What instead did they decide to show? They made it seem as though there was some kind of instability here, which there is none, let me assure you. Gambia is still peaceful. And people are still going about minding their own business and enjoying themselves. And it is the same thing that is happening in Ethiopia today. And I stand by Ethiopia. Yeah? It is the same thing that is happening here today. Misinformation. And you know what hurts me is that some of the newscasters, some of the journalists that is carrying the news look like us. Have we no loyalty? Have we no self-respect? Have we no dignity? Do we, do we? I mean, I don't know, join me. Tell me, join me, join me, join me. Super chat me, super stick at me, do whatever you want, but join me. Yeah, I put the address in the private chat, 
So you can cut and paste that straight into your browser and join me. I'm putting it back on the screen again. I'm putting it here. I want to big a big shout out to Joseph Sakala um, LV. Please join me. Come and join me. Let's discuss this. I've seen so many examples. And then I'll, I'll give you something even closer to home, closer to home. Oh, my gosh. Think about this. Think about this. Now, I'm so sorry if I'm a bit animated today, but I have to get this off my chest, right? I have to get it off my chest. Now, as you know, I've been coming here for over 10 years. And um, I love, I love, I love Africa. Whether I'm in Sierra Leone, whether um, I'm in Casamance in Senegal, or whether um, I'm further afield, or whether I'm in even North Africa, because I've been to a, a few North African countries also, uh, whether I'm in, you know, uh, one of the African islands like Mauritius, you know, I love Africa. I am a lover of Africa, right? And um, I'm going to read out a few of the comments, um, you know. Um, I just want to say doing Garvey TV, big yourself up and thank you for joining. You and your husbands are the realest productive black Africans returning families on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> I'll give a big thank you for that one. And um, uh, also, uh, Tuko said that uh, I can write reams about the times that I've been done a dirty on by a black people who look like me. For instance, a black housing officer who told um, a, a, a reg sorry, irregular lie on my family for a pat on the head by the whites. Now, listen, this is another thing. What do we do it for? Mm, what do we do it for? You know, I, I, I even looked through YouTube, right? I did it uh, just a search. Um, now, Blexit for us, yeah, there was like, there was um, Blexit, which I remember coming out of the US, but it wasn't quite the same. Blexit, um, you know, was, was coming from us, um, who was in the UK whilst there was Brexit. So they had Brexit, which was about the British leaving Europe. And we are the blacks. We are the, the, the Africans leaving Europe to return to Africa. So that is where um, Blacksit came for us. And that was from many, many years ago, many, many years ago. Um, because, of course, the debate for um, England to leave Europe has been an age old debate since I was very young till now. So it, it's an old concept. Um, and that's where it comes from. So, Joseph, I'd love you to join me live. Um, I hope you have the link. It says, he said that the problem we have as our people in our community is our own people who look like us. Is it because we distrust or is it because we'll quite easily sell each other out? Mm -hmm. And what will we sell each other out for? YouTube trinkets? Uh, uh, I shouldn't really say that, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, will we sell each other out for uh, little shekels, a pat on the, uh, on the head, a promotion even, a promotion, yes? Will we, um, you know, will we defy and tear each other down just for gossip's sake? Will we do it to betray a sister who's helped you? W what would you do it for? Would you report someone to an institution just because you heard something which wasn't true? Just because you heard something that wasn't true. And like, I remember seeing things about myself, even on YouTube, and I'm saying, that's not true. Well, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> that's not true. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. That's not true. Okay, so now we've got Joseph joining us. Thanks for joining us, Joseph. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> hey, listen, I got to give an intro. I have to give an intro. Yeah, let me just turn it up so I can hear you better. I have to give okay. an intro. This is a, one of the newest stars of um, YouTube, in my view. He's one of the um, fastest growing up and coming uh, YouTubers. And if you remember, uh, last week we had um, forwards ever, backwards never. And I said that. Um, we will be using our platform um, to feature up-and-coming um, YouTubers. Now, I want to say that Joseph is quite unique in that he's a truth seeker. And I love the truth. 
Even if it hurts me, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. I prefer you tell me the truth than a lie. And I prefer that you tell the truth about me than a lie. Exactly. And exactly. I've so me that it's just crazy. So I don't want to talk about that. Let's talk about you. Please introduce yourself to Blackstick Family. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us today. It is a deep honor to have you on here. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, I, I am an auspicious company and I am so grateful uh, and humbled by your presence. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, uh, Juliet. Hello, Blackstick Family. Um, I think she has done the whole introduction of me. Uh, I'm just a simple person, Joseph Sakala LV. And uh, new on YouTube, my channel is is new. You can check it out. It goes of Joseph Sakala, uh, LV, just those words. Yeah, that's that's basically me. Yeah. My mic is muted. He said his channel is Joseph Sakala. Can you spell it slowly? LV, which stands for life. So, um, can you spell it slowly so everybody can subscribe to your channel? Okay, so it's uh, J O S E P H S A K A L A, then L V. Excellent. I'm just putting that on the screen so everybody can subscribe. Sure. So here we go. Is that right? Oh, sorry about the J. <laughs> oh, it should be a capital. But is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Cool. So, I mean, Joseph, you know, um, I have been um, watching your channel. I am a subscriber. I'm an ardent viewer. Um, and today we are talking about um, enemies of the race. Now, you have focused a lot of, of really interesting and well-researched content on your channel about just this mm -hmm. subject. So I am so mm -hmm. glad that you are here today. Now, please share, you know, about some of your content and your experiences, and what is the way forward for us? What do we do? Uh, my content is all about trying to unite, you know, the diaspora and Africans, and trying to find a way of which we can work together, because we are one, you understand? Even if there are those people who claim to say Africans, this, uh, diaspora, this, the fact is we are one, we are one race. You understand? So I, I yes. concentrate mostly on um, uh, uniting, as I said, uniting ourselves as people and uh, trying to, 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 to defend people who are falsely accused by people who call themselves our own, or should I say people within our community, you understand? So I, I, I don't like seeing as a people, black people like we, we fighting each other, I don't know. If we together, have to um, have a common goal instead of trying to bring each other down. Someone doing good, you want to bring them down. But for me, it doesn't sit well with me. So I try by all means to try and talk positive things about such kind of people who they are trying to attack. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was a little bit of lag there, but um, I got the message loud and clear. And I, I want to thank you, actually, for doing a very good job of that. And please, family, please go and subscribe to his channel. I'm leaving it on there. Um, Joseph Sakala LV, okay? Please subscribe to my brother's channel. It's very good, full of uh, lots of good and interesting um, content. I mean, and you also show the other side of the coin, which is really good because you recently had a series showing what life was like for people in Skid Row and, and for other places in America, which showed the flip side of America, the America that they never want you to see. Um, mm. You know, and, and you know, it, it's been, re and, and some of the incidents even that's been happening in the UK as well. So it's nice that you're showing both sides of what is happening and also, you know, what's happening in the continent. But um, how do we tackle enemies of um, the race. What do we do? How, how can we reduce the impact um, of, these, um, of, of, of this constant attack? I was watching um, Phil Scott. Um, 
a colleague of mine, Sam, sent me a link to one of Phil Scott's programs with uh, Jesse Stalout, can't remember his name. But um, anyway, so where he was having a debate and he was like harboring on the fact and asking Phil, do you love white people? Which I thought was a completely irrelevant question because, you know, love is ephemeral. It all depends on who you are and who you love. And, and in some ways, love is a very overrated word and misused uh, term as well. So I think it's, it, you know, so Phil kind of said, look, it's about who I respect. And then he said, well, I respect. And I just said, you know what? That's also for me, respect has to be given. It has to be earned. I don't just give it to anybody. And so, but I mean, what can we do about enemies of the race? As you know, it, they're causing a lot of damage to the um, return to Africa movement um, because they're casting aspersions and lies, which unfortunately people don't question and believe. So what can we do? What solutions do you have? How can we come together to, um, you know, approach the issue or to tackle it in some way? Uh, I think the the best way that we can tackle this is not giving too much attention to people who are trying to um, be heard and carry guys. How many people from the diaspora can come to Africa? or any African country and try to, to, to blend in with the locals. I need to give, not to give uh, an ear to people trying to spread negativity in our community as a people. And the second thing is, let's try by all means to support people who are doing good on the continent. It doesn't matter where they are from. The fact is that they are trying to do good among us as the people. And what I mean by people is like a black uh, community as a whole, whether from, from America, whether you are from wherever, Japan, China, or whatever, when you are on the I hear what you're saying. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I think. And, you know, the problem that we have is is that in, in our community, that's just a fact. I'd, I've never been to America. Uh, I've never been to, to, to Europe, but I will say what I've said of those things, but those immediately with something want to and destroy that person. And and I think this goes in other uh, 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 families, like in the diaspora as well. You understand? But if we can only tackle that thing as black people, whereby we stop attacking people who are trying to do good, who are trying to do the good work, and 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 support them and try to work together with them, I think we can go very far. I agree with you. And I think to a certain degree, one of the things that we do too much as a black community is to actually focus on um, negativity. And uh, we're too, too, we're always drawn to drama. And, um, you know, like I put up the post and I said, we're so busy debating, but why aren't we putting our money together and creating? Huh? Exactly. Talk, exactly. Talk, talk, 
where's the action? Other races go and put their <laughs> in action. And I'm not going to say, oh, we haven't been disadvantaged by slavery. Of course we have. No. I'm not going to say we haven't been disadvantaged by racism. Of course we have. I can't say we haven't been um, destroyed by the devices that have been put in place to make sure that we remain divided. Of course we have. I'm not going to pretend that people like me who lost their culture, lost their heritage, lost their land, was displaced, you know, on a, 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 a severe disadvantage. Right. Of course we are. Yeah, I'm not going to pretend mm. that we're not, you know, brainwashed. Mm. I'm not going to pretend we're not brain damaged. I'm not going to pretend that we don't have self-hate. I'm not going to mm. pretend that, you know, we, we exploit and kill each other. Of course we do. Mm. Yeah? And every other mm. race does too. Mm. Every other race does too. But the difference mm. is, is that it time has come for a change. And saying that, I want to introduce now Sam to talk about enemies of the race. What do you have to say about that? It's time for a change. It's time for a change. And, you know, we have to be the change that we want to see. Where can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Welcome. Of course we can. Okay, Welcome. that's good. We're just going right. to... Okay. Now, when you talk about enemies of the faith, you're talking about our own people, right? Okay, I can't hear you. All right. Um, I cannot hear you, Juliet. Can you hear me? I muted off so that you could be clear. Okay. Um, so I, I wouldn't think about any other race, my love, because the race that I love is my race that I love. Yeah. Okay, so when you're talking about enemy of our race, who are you talking about? Uh, the typical one, obviously, are non-blacks, but are you talking about our own people? Enemies of the race. It's right. for you to determine who the well, enemies see, of the race. Okay, so look, uh, hello, Joseph, how are you? You okay? Um, the, one of the things that I, you know, for me, what's really troubling um, is our own people who appear to be one of us. You see, it's very easy for you to look at someone and, you know, distance yourself from the person because you know where you stand, the person knows where you stand. You see, I always say that I like people who are up front with me. If they don't like me, I prefer for them to come up front to me and tell me they don't like me. So at least I know I keep to myself, they keep to themselves. And if I have to deal with them, then I know what to expect and I know how to you know, to present myself. But the problem is that when we have people among us who appears to be caring for our community, and these are the very people who are causing, in my own opinion, more damage, you know, because at the end of the day, the, the enemy, the real enemy themselves, those who don't want to see us unite, most of the time they, they won't come blatantly <laughs> and try to infiltrate whatever we're trying to do. It is people who are like us, they're more likely to use. Do you understand? As I've always given an analogy, that if somebody comes into your house and create havoc and create division, I'm not gonna blame the person who came into your house. I'll blame the people in your house to have allowed that to happen in the first place. I always say that. So if today, like three of us here, you know, we have one mission, not because we mean bad on anyone else. I don't care about what other people think, whatever people want to do, etc. What I'm concentrated on is my own people. And why am I concentrating on my own people? Because of the history. We could sit down here and talk about it. And I'm sure everybody who's listening here knows the history of our people. Now, one can say, oh, we can forgive and forget because obviously it didn't happen in our own time. But the unfortunate thing is that it is still happening it is still happening. Our people are suffering. Our people are dying. Right? Our people are dying. You know, you know, they were talking about the hurricane that actually hit the US. It is very sad. And I feel sorry for, you know, my people who've actually probably suffered as a result in America. But what I'm saying is that right now, there are people in other parts of the continent who are actually dying because of the systems that have been place, put in place by the West in order to stifle Africa's growth. We have a lot of young people in Africa who could be doing so well today and they don't have the opportunity 
right? So even for me, even for some of the leaders, I'm not saying all the leaders, for some of the leaders of the continent, I'm actually quite flabbergasted that these people have the cheek to fly their wives over to other parts of the world to have their wives or even themselves treated medically. They go to other parts of the world. They see how beautiful it is. Well, in quotes, the beautiful parts they want to show you. And they don't feel, they don't have any zeal in them to come and manifest the same thing in the continent. These people are also enemies, right? When you're holding back young people, who could be doing much more? So for me, the enemies are not only, you know, in the West, in the diaspora, they're also in the continent. We have people who, as we as you alluded to uh, a few weeks ago, where you have some spy or agents who are from the US, black, like you and I, coming over to Africa, pretending to be one of us, and they come in. You see, look, when you step on somebody, they're already down. How much more do you want to step on them and to keep them down? That's what I don't understand. Look at when the, the Omicron virus, when it actually first detected. Everyone said, oh, it's from Africa, Africa, Africa. That's what they're saying here in the UK. Oh, it's from Africa. And all of a sudden, the UK government put 11 countries, African countries, well, 10 countries initially, from the southern part of Africa on the red list, which it is scrapped. And then they added Nigeria last. And then, oh, was, was it yesterday? They've now actually removed all the African countries from the red list. Why? Because they know, which they know this already, that that virus is now being detected in almost every country. So what would give anyone in their right mind that it stemmed from Africa? So in other words, it's like the initial last year they were saying, oh, things are going to get worse in Africa. So it's like everything worse in Africa, right? And then we have our own people, some of them who already see that a lot of our brothers and sisters in the continent, they're determined to make things successful, to have a successful future, but they're struggling. So we are some of us in a diaspora who could be coming over there to lend our skills our experience or whatever we've learned, instead of us to use it for the good, we're either using it for our selfish uh, uh, interest or using it to harm our own people. So these people, I don't even know, how can they stand in front of the mirror every morning and look at themselves, right? But uh, one thing I would say, and I think this is for each and every one of us, that for every drop of blood of my ancestors that have been wasted in the diaspora and have been wasted in the continent. I'm saying this right now, for every one, every drop of blood, any member of our community, and when I'm talking about community, I'm talking about black, whatever you do to hold us back, to step on us, the blood of our ancestors are on your head, right? The blood of our ancestors are on your head. That's all I can say to you. So don't think that whatever you do to us, to any of us, whether you do that to our people in the US or in Africa or in Europe, the blood of our ancestors are in your hands. And something also I would like to make clear, which people always try to gloss over. People like to talk about, oh, Africans actually sold their own brothers and sisters, etc. Well, let me have, I have news for you. Some of the Africans who even sold their own brothers and sisters, as one would say, they also were captured. There's lots of evidence whereby those who even sold, they were also captured. They were also slaves as well, right? They were enslaved, okay? Now, a lot of uh, some people from the, the Americas, especially, I've, I've not heard from, from the Caribbean, but I've probably some of them from the Caribbean, from Americas, I'm saying this because I've heard it many times. Oh, you sold us. Oh, you know, these are not Americans, you know, our ancestors, etc. Well, let me have news for you. Even if members of people whose family would never even left the continent, they also have their ancestors who were killed in America. Because you have to remember, families were split. 
So if you're looking at the history of America, the ancestors, those who actually made America, who fought during slavery, those are also our ancestors, even though we're not Americans, but we were born in the continent. Because those are our uncles, our brothers, our aunties, our sisters that were taken there as well. So if you want to ask me, we have ancestors also. When I look at the people of old, our ancestors, our forefathers in America, they're also our ancestors. They gave birth and the generation down to the current day Americans, African Americans were there. But these people are also our ancestors. And also, I was born in Africa, right? But also part of my ancestors on my dad's side, they can trace their roots from to, to slavery. To slavery. So I was born in Africa, but members of my family going down, say probably 100, 200 years old, they were returned slaves. So are you telling me that because I was born in the continent, I don't have the right to speak? I have the right to speak for anyone, for anyone that represent themselves as an African. As John Henry Clark said, black does not define who you are as a person. So for those who call themselves black, I call myself an African, not because I was born in the continent, because it's in my blood, right? It's in my blood. Black does not tell, does, does not define who you are. Does not define who you are. When the Americans, the white Americans are, de are de defining who they are as a person, they don't say to themselves only white, they say European, right? European, right? When a white man is born in Africa, go and check in Kenya, they refer to them as European. But a black man, because Africa is not where it is, right now where we want it to be we all aspire for africa to be great and also i'll be honest with you i want to see africa develop but not to develop to the standard of the west we don't want i don't want to be developed to the standard of the west because i tell you right now for every one of us who are in the west i've got news for you all it takes for everything to come stand still and people start dying is for us to have a solar storm if we have a solar storm when you go to certain parts of Europe, you, you see the Northern Lights. I think you can also see that in Canada. That is a solar storm, right? Now, if that solar storm reaches the Earth and go passes the stratosphere of the Earth, it will knock out every power station. And do you know what will happen if there any power station in the West falls up? You will not be online right now, etc., watching this program. You're, you will have a fridge to store your food. Right? The, 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 the pump station, the gas stations will not be able to pump fuel into the, the delivery trucks to deliver food to the local stores. Your fresh food that's packed in cello wrap will not be able to be uh, uh, pre-packed for you to have in the food shelves. The super, the, 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 the food stores, they will not be able to have the, the, the refrigeration in order to cool the food or wherever it is to preserve the foods. The, the whole world, the Western world will come to a standstill. And this doesn't only have to take place, in fact, when there's a solar storm. It could also be hackers, right? Hackers can hack. So we live in a fragile world when it comes to the, when we, in the West, we live in a fragile world, right? If you take a look at the impact right now in the West, whereby because of the COVID restriction, it's affecting the mental, uh, 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 how can I put it? Suffering. The, 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 the damage this is doing to people's mental ability is more damaging than the virus itself. People have been affected mentally. Right? People have been affected mentally. The weather that is gloomy, it's cold. Right? The sun, lack of sunshine. And with a restriction. And in fact, some people are free to do whatever they want. But the fact that you've been told that, okay, you, can, you have to stand two meters apart, you have to wear a mask, you have to do this, you have to do that, it's messing up people's mental ability to function properly, right? So, you know, look, I'll be honest with you, Africa is not for everyone. And I've learned that quite quickly. It's not for everyone. If you're happy where you are, stay where you are. And I even say this to Africans who even were born in the continent and left the continent. You want to go and stay and die in Europe? So go ahead and do that. You want to go and stay and die in the West? Do that. There's a lot of people who were born in our continent of Africa, came over here, worked 
they bought off really hard. Unfortunately, they planned to go back. And unfortunately, they never made it back. How many people here who worked hard, retired, instead of them to go back, they stayed here, they died. They died with nothing left, right? I'll give an example, Juliet, of my cousin. I had a cousin who died last year, right? Uh, she used to live in the UK and 20 years or 25 years ago, she moved over to the US. She worked really hard. She was living in Arizona and she had a big house. She was doing well financially, very independent. She would travel back and forth to the UK as often. I used to even think that for her to travel over to the UK every now and again, it's like having a bus ride because she used to do so frequently. Back in 2008, when the market crashed, we had the recession. She lost her job. And in that time when she lost her job, she then also ended up with a very bad uh, ill health, which meant that she couldn't work. Now, you know, in America, if you don't have a job or if you don't have, you're not paying for health insurance, you're going to be affected because what happens is that nobody's going to care for you, right? So she suffered. When I said she suffered, she really suffered. Juliet, she lost everything. She lost the house to foreclosure, right? She lost the house to foreclosure. Her health got so deteriorated that she lost everything. The only thing she had was a suitcase of clothes. Now, years on later, obviously she got better. She started to build her life again slowly. She died last year. We don't know what she died of. We don't know whether it's called COVID, et cetera, but she lost everything. She died, I think, at the age of 55. She lost everything. And then, it's only just last week I was saying to someone, she came to this to the West, she came to, to America, she went to America, worked hard, bought a huge house. She lost it. She died a poor person. The only thing they were able to ship over back to members of her family was her ash in her own. She died. Now, my question is, how many of, even the Africans themselves, and I include myself in it, because I'm speaking, don't think I'm asleep. I'm appearing in your show and I'm speaking because I have plans, but I don't need to tell people my plans. And I've spoken to you about it before. But a lot of us, we're losing sight. When we see all the glamour, all the, 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 the glitz, we think that life is, is greener. Everything is better on the other side. And as a result of that, we're prepared to sell our souls to come hard, come down on our brothers. That video you're talking about, this guy, supposedly a Christian. The guy, you know, you can talk about when people are extreme, right? You have different side of extreme. If the guy was so, ex the guy professed to be a Christian and he was so extreme that he was refused to acknowledge anything to do with Africanness when he was speaking to Phil Scott. And I don't even want to mention his name, to be honest with you. I was watching this video and my stomach was churning. I was, I just, I, I think probably I could have, I could have punched that screen off. I, I don't even know how Phil Scott could actually sit down and be interviewed by that guy. I don't understand. It, it, you know what? I, I, listen, do you know what, Juliet? I, I stood up for the whole half an hour, 40 minutes and watched, I couldn't sit down. I stood up because like I said, if you cannot see what's happening to your brothers and sisters now, a system that's been put in place to create chaos, look at the chaos that's in Nigeria. The chaos that's in Nigeria was created by the British when they left there. They knew in the same way the chaos that you have right now with India and Pakistan, was created by the British because India and Pakistan was one country. Now you have India and Pakistan fighting each other, right? That's the chaos. They put a system in place that today they will fold their arms and watch. And then they'll turn to you, the black man, and say to you, you cannot blame us. You have opportunity like anybody else to succeed in life. But there's a system that we live in. And I want my kids, and I said to my kids, I said, look, you're now in primary school, you're now in secondary school, 
you're playing around with with those who are not Africans or, or so, that's fine. I have no issue, right? Because kids are kids. But I said to you, you know what? You watch as you all get older, the division, the divide between you two will start widening because the system forces that division. The system that's put in place, right? So the typical white person come up to you and say to you, oh, well, I don't understand. Why didn't you get, why can't you get a job? Or they can stand around and say to you, oh, you know what? We're not racist. We're not this one or that. Okay, fine. You may not be racist, but a system that's been put in place that we're all propping up is in place to come against us. And this system is not only in Africa, it's also in, in America, it's also in the West. For example, we look at our brothers and sisters in America killing each other. Um, lots of men in America incarcerated. Incarcerated, why? The system was put in place. The system was put in place. So what happens? The black man is incarcerated. When the black man is incarcerated, the family is broken. When the family is broken, the woman, the black woman, then start losing confidence in the black man and then start turning away from the black man, right? Because the black man is supposed to lead. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, 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 the, 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 sorry? Joseph jump in. I'm gonna let Joseph jump in. I want you to stay there because um, he's uh, all the way in um, South uh, Zambia. You're right. Am I correct? Am I correct? Yeah, Joseph, he's in Zambia. Can you hear me? Are you in Zambia or South Africa? I think he's frozen. He's moving a bit. So. Joseph, can you hear me? Let's see. He's probably fixing something. No, continue. I'm just saying that. I'm going to um, let him join the yeah, debate so, with you. So okay? what I want to say is that this guy was speaking to Phil Scott and he was saying that... I want to continue in this vein. I'm just letting you know that I'm adding him in. Right. Do you want me to continue? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm so what I'm saying is this. that, so we you see the excuse that we black people have is that we're killing each other, etc. Yes, I, I say the same thing. In London, we have youths, we have youths killing each other, black youths killing each other. I always say the same thing. Why are we killing each other? That is a problem for us to resolve, and we have to be able to tackle that. But we cannot forget that the system has been put in place for that. Now, one can say, okay, we could stop all of this. Now, we should stop all of this killing each other, harming each other, we should. But in the same way, when you look at the white race saying that, oh, this person committed this crime, this person is behaving this way because they have a mental issue, they have a mental illness, right? Now, why do you think black people are killing each other? A lot of it is something that <laughs> you can also allude to that, that they also have mental illness from all the years of what has happened to them that's been passed on from generation to generation, right? Now, these people who are doing this stuff, we are killing each other, etc. You cannot even reason with a lot of these people. The only way you can reason with a lot of these people, you have to take them away from their environment to reason with them. Because they're in a different frame of frame, uh, mindset. Right? Now, I'm not making excuses. We could do better. We, could, should, we should do better. But what I'm saying is that a system has been put in place, right, in order for these things to be happening. So it doesn't come to me as a surprise. You know, it's like when they turn around and they look, my, the school said to my, my said to my wife and myself some years ago. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now, Joseph? Joseph, can you hear us? I think this is dialing in from um, Zambia. It it might be. Are you in South Africa or Zambia? I'm not sure where you are at the moment. I'm probably sure if he comes. Me, yeah, probably yeah. if he actually yeah. turns off. If he yeah. turn turn your mic off. Sorry, turn your camera off. Your camera off. Yeah, turn your camera off. He's using too much bandwidth. Turn your camera off, and then we'll try you that way. Yeah. See if you can hear me. Yeah. Can hear you. Yeah, try, try to come in without your camera because I think that it's slowing down. Your signal. 
And if anyone else would like to join the debate, I'm going to post the um, address right here, right now. Hang on. So you can join us if you'd like to. Yeah, you're coming in and out. Try to come back in without the camera. Okay, try to come back in without the camera. Anyway, but Sam, I mean, I've, I've heard everything you've said, and I must confess, I must confess that I am um, very much in agreement with most of what you said. Um, however, however, I've got to say that I believe that the education system um, that teaches uh, white superiority has a lot to do with black inferiority complex, yeah? I, I also think that um, you cannot disregard their historical ties. And I loved what you said, um, especially about, um, it's like here in Gambia, we have Aku and Aku, of course, are um, uh, returned people that were um, prisoners of war, which were enslaved. And so I, I see us as prisoners of, of, of war. And I think it's important that we do regard ourselves as prisoners of war. We were taken against our will. We were imprisoned against our will. Uh, we were captive. We were held captive against our will. We were tortured against our will. You know, our women um, were raped against their will, forced to have children they did not want against their will, um, shipped uh, and, and, and distributed across the Caribbean uh, in America and beyond against their will, yeah? And murdered against their will. And the thing is, is that, you know, the fight for reparations has to also start here in Africa. It's one of the things that I'm very, very concerned of. You know, do we hate ourselves so much we don't even think we deserve a compensation, reparations, or any kind of, 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 of uh, real, um, you know, um, uh, let's just say consequence for what has happened to our ancestors? Have we got amnesia? Have we forgotten here on the continent? And, you know, the AU and other bodies, I, I, I don't understand. What are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, why? What, what are you doing about this? What are you doing but, about but the unification Julia, coming Julia. together as Africans, both Africans that are outside of Africa and Africans in Europe? What are we doing? Are these the same people? Are, are they working against us so that we cannot unify? What is going on? I mean, go ahead, Sam. But Julia, this is the point I'm making to you, right? Please, I think we just need to stop. You know, I'm thinking, are these people, are, are, you know, are some of our people, yeah. One sec, Rasta asked the question, um, and I want to answer him. The answer is no, no, not at all. So go ahead now, Sam, sorry. Yeah, the, the point I need to make, you see, we need to stop. We need to stop and think for ourselves that sometimes I think it's almost as if some of these governments that are ruling our continent or the, or the countries in our continent, they're under some sort of spell. Right? They have they, they have no zeal. First, I would actually say having zeal for your people. Zeal for your people. You got governments in the West putting up propaganda, doing everything under the sun to appear to be like heroes among their people. And some, I'm not saying all the African governments, right? Some of the African governments are doing literally nothing. Because you know, you need to bear in mind. Because people like, you know, I have some, some people, especially from America, the African Americans, some of them saying, oh, how come the Africans never came and stood for us, help us after slavery and all the struggles we've been going through in America? And then, you know, it just shows that there's been lack of information on both sides because what they have to understand is that after slavery, the Europeans came and divided Africa, right? They divided Africa and controlled it. Right? So guess what? To the point that I think, if I'm not lying, Marcus Gavi, Marcus Gavi wanted to go to Africa. They even stopped the man from going to Africa. So he never set foot in Africa. Yeah. So you imagine the man was promoting Africa. He was stopped from coming into the continent. Right? So they were controlling our people in the Caribbean. They were controlling our people in Americas. Right? They're controlling our people in the continent. 
So whilst exactly. you know, whilst they're sowing oats of division among our people in America, so how can we the Africans stood up for it? And even if you say, oh, the Africans actually, some of the Africans actually sold uh, their own brothers and sisters. Well, I've said something for you. Do you think those African, uh, wherever it is, do you think they knew what was happening to the slaves once it left the continent to the enslaved? They didn't know anything because when the Africans used to go to war and they capture their enemies, they used, they used, they used to marry the woman. And for the men, they used to use them as um, servants. They, 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 they get them to, they, they get, in fact, they used to get them to integrate into their own community, right? Okay, they were never treating them like the way the West did, like the way the Arabs did. So at the end of the day, we cannot turn around and say, oh, why didn't the Africans do this, right? If anything, I would actually say those who are in the West, the Africans in the West, like the African-Americans or the Africans in Europe, etc. You know, they should have been the one who actually have the access to the knowledge of everything that's been done to them to turn around and say, hang on a minute, you know, uh, this information has been kept away from us. We should be the one who's coming over to make a difference in the continent, right? Because okay. the very, yeah, now we should be, wanna, yeah. I, I want to interject there, there, right? When, when um, we met with the um, president of the Gambia, I'm just going to mute you because I'm getting a bit of an echo. One sec. Okay, so when I um, uh, had an audience with His Excellency Adam Mubaru, um, the president of the Gambia, I was like really pleasantly surprised. And I must say, uh, congratulations, right? Congratulations. He was conscious. Oh my gosh, I am so happy. I was so happy because he was conscious. He was, you know, he, he, he was Pan-Africanist. So that for me said so much and he thanked us for even coming here. But the reason why I'm saying this is because he's the newly appointed chair of ECOWAS. So what I'm trying to say is that there's change of foot. So I'll say congratulations because he watches Blacksit. He's a Blacksit subscriber. And so it shows you that social media is actually having impact. Can you imagine? You go to see the president of the country and he says he watches your channel. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I was in shock. He knew who I was. He knew the content. He knew what we were talking about. And so I think change is afoot. I want, I, I want to bring in um, Joseph for a second. Um, Joseph, are you with me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I'm still here. Oh, brilliant. Now, now let's, let's, let's add you both back into the debate, right? So, um, enemies of the race, uh, uh, do you think they're stopping our progress or they're helping our progress? Uh, there's, there, some, some way I'll say they are stopping our progress. You, you, you know why I'm saying they're stopping our progress? It's because, uh, they, they, like I said before, there are people who like feeding on negativity or negative energy. You understand? So when someone starts uh, attacking a fellow individual or a group of people within our race, there are those who'll be happy to say, yes, we want to see them come down. You understand? So it doesn't help our, our, our activities or our ideologies or agenda that we want to do on the continent. You understand? My mother told me stories of how my great grandfather was stolen from Africa. You understand? Just right there, he was staying between Zambia and Angola. There is a, a, a border between Zambia and Angola. There is a river there. He went to draw water. Then Restore them to such people, it doesn't help in any way at all. It doesn't help in any way at all. And whether people like it or not, there is those brigades who like saying uh, Africans this, Af Africans that. You 
even land. The, the first thing that they came from, the first place they came from, was this place called Africa. So we are one people in either way you want to look at it. We are one people. So attacking each other, talking yeah. trash about each other, throwing stones at each other, you are not hating the individuals you are trying to bring down, but you are hating the whole population or the whole uh, 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 race as, as a people because we cannot go forward like that. You understand? Joseph, I will even add, when people do that, they're hurting themselves. And exactly. people who do these things, yeah. they hate themselves. When you hate yourself, right, and you attack your brothers or sisters who look like you, you're hurting yourself. I don't know if you ever heard of self-mutilation. When you take a blade or a knife, you cut yourself because you hate yourself, right? That's literally what you're doing, okay? That's what you're doing. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm done. I was just <laughs> enjoying your conversation. I wanted to bring this in. Uh, I, I Just to add on a little bit is what I can say is we must not uh, give attention to people who want to, to, to talk trash or bring down us as a people, as a race, you understand? We have to concentrate on the positivity as a people. Of course, in our communities, there are those people who always do what these people are trying to do. You understand? Like what you said before, they captured slaves. You understand? They captured slaves. At the end of the day, they were captured as well. You understand? After cutting slaves, they themselves were captured as well. So it's, it's so funny and, 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 and so sad at the same time that they are using our own people to bring our people down. You understand? Because they know that if it comes to them, people will start questioning to say, why are you coming after our people? You understand? But if they use one of us, instead of questioning, people will start saying, yeah, I think this is right because this one is seeing some things. And even if someone is trying to create a or creating a rumor or creating something which is possible about someone, they will say yes, because it's coming from someone who looks like us. You understand? So we need uh, uh, to come up with um, uh, uh, ideologies whereby we, we need to tackle these things because the self-hate in the black community is very real. It's nothing to say it's, it's an illusion yeah. or no, it's just one or two, three people. No, 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 no. It is very, very real. Okay, so listen, there are, you know, men and women in our community that decide to go and... Um, have relations outside of uh, their race. And then they, um, some of them actually turn around and berate and denigrate and distance themselves from their race and actually uh, turn around and do more harm than good. Um, I would like to ask you, are they enemies of the race or are they allies of the race? So is this person's partner who is not uh, black, are they an ally to the race or are they an enemy of the race? You, you know, I, I would say culturally, I'm a cultured person. I, I'm, I'm too much into culture. So when we are having these meetings, our, our elders, they teach us, they tell us to say, if you see a big snake, it's a snake. If you see a small snake or a baby snake, it's still a snake. You understand? So you cannot turn around uh, and then go back to that kind of, of, of scenario whereby the same people that mistreated you without sorting out the, the, the issues, because they continue denying what they do. They inflict pain on us. They, 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 they make all these kind of laws, like what is recently happening there in the UK. They're trying to, 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 to they pass a bill which is revoking uh, a, a, a black Ameri I mean black Africans descent uh, citizenships, you understand? And then you, 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 you try to go back and then try in, to entangle yourself with such kind. I don't know. Myself, I think it's wrong. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, 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 to justify my point or whatever. I think for me, I would rather go for a powerful African woman. I wouldn't um, involve myself or entangle myself in, in such kind of activities, no. I wouldn't do that. And, and it doesn't help our race, to be honest with you. You know, there, there are a lot of dangers in, in having, let me not go there, <laughs> but I think it's wrong. It, it's very totally wrong. They are, they are not for us. Such kind of people, they are not for us, and they are very dangerous. That's what I can say. You see, look, you see, Juliet, uh, um, one of the things, yeah. can you hear um, me? Yes. I want you I want you, yeah, 
to, okay. to, so to you, join on this. As you know, there have been many okay. enemies of, 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 of those that have been out there and, you know, attacking so many black people that have been doing so much good work to help us come back home. And, you know, one of the huge, um, you know, I, 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 I would say uh, people responsible for doing that is actually, you know, um, entangled with um, someone of another race but uses their platform to shoot down other black people. So I want to know, are they uh, considered an ally or an enemy? And is their partner considered an enemy or an ally? That's what I'm going to put to you as well. Okay. So, look, I, I, I concur with... Um, Joseph, what he said about the uh, culture. If you take a look at the Asians, um, if you look at the Chinese, you look at the Indians, etc. They they marry within their culture. Okay, why? Because they want to keep their culture alive. They want to keep their tradition alive, etc. Now, you know, if I take myself as an example. I wanted to make sure that I stay within my culture. And bear in mind, you know, when I came over here, you know, many years ago, about 30 odd plus years ago, I, I was not uh, uh, all this fired up about my race. Because remember, I just left the continent, I came here, and I, would, and then I didn't even know nothing about slavery. It was only a few years later when I saw, um, you know, um, roots, Everything changed for me. I went out crazy, right? And that's how I learned. But even then still, before I knew about everything that happened to my people, I was never big up about saying, you know what? You know, I look on the other side thinking that, you know what? I could probably have an interest. For example, where I grew up when I was growing up as a child, there was a lot of uh, white girls around me when I was growing up, right? A lot. I never actually, I remember, I can tell you about blatantly right now, I never befriend any one of them because it was not of my interest. I didn't, even, I didn't even need to put effort into it. I just didn't look at it because I was not interested. Instead, I remember I was chasing after, uh, you know, one or two black girls in my school at the time, and they were so difficult. But believe me, I was prepared to wait. Even sometimes I would even go without my lunch money just to get them lunch. But I was happy, right? So for me, I think that, you know, look, there's a lot of things you take into consideration before you get into any relationship. And I don't think that when people say, oh, you cannot stop love, you cannot do this. Well, you know what? I've been there. And to be honest with you, it never came to my mind. And I never had to. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I want to eat proper food. You know, you know, my wife can cook proper food. I want to eat proper food. And at the same time, I don't want to get old I don't, want to, I don't want her to get old before me. You know, right now, I look at my wife and myself, we're in competition. You know, she looks 20 and I look 20. Believe me, you know, <laughs> we're we a lot older than that, you know. And I'm thinking, you know, let's see who's going to get older first. And that's how I want to be. You know, marriage is an investment. You know, you know, she doesn't use any cream to make sure that she looks keeps looking young. <laughs> of course not. Right? Now, for me, it's common sense. It's investment. Right? Now, you know, I'm not going to actually get work myself hard, build up wealth, and then allow, say, probably my kids to go and marry off anyone else. You know, a system has been put in place where to oppress me, to suppress me while I'm trying to build this wealth, and then only for you to go and go and marry to someone else, and then they get to inherit what I work hard for. Are you out of your mind? Right? So for me, I think that if you are proud of your culture, Right? If you're proud of who you are as a person, you bear in mind of what your people have been through in the past and what we're going through still today, you would actually think twice before you make that move. But then again, if you want to go ahead and do it, on your head be it. That's your problem. You make your bed, you lie on it. Right? Like I said, I want to make sure that when I'm still 60, 70, that you know, I could turn around to my wife and see her looking as young as twenty, because she would be. You know, my mom at the moment now she's in her eighties, and when a lot, a lot of people see her, they say you look quite young. Well, I said yeah. I said why not? So I make sure I make sure that I made the right choice over twenty years ago, and I'm still with the same woman, and she's still as beautiful as ever. I have no problem with that, right? So as far as I'm concerned, 
I think it's up to the individual if they actually want to go ahead and marry whoever they want to marry. That's their problem. But what I can say is that if you love yourself, you will think twice. You know, in fact, even my daughter, who is only what well, on their year, I even avoid her watching too many cartoons with white characters on it. I avoid her watching too many things that just shows white. I avoid that happening. Why? Because I don't want her to grow up and think that, oh, she's going to have a Barbie doll with, uh, you know, a blonde hair. It's not happening in this house. And in fact, you know, I think my wife was, we were looking at a black doll the other day and she was saying, oh, the black doll is so ugly. And I thought to myself, yeah, and I look at it. And apparently, you know what they've done with a black doll? They took a white baby and painted it black, right? So no wonder it looks ugly <laughs> because they painted it black. But if you actually have dolls, I hope somebody's listening to me. Why don't somebody come up with babies or dolls that look like black babies? So that at least I know that with that, they look attractive. When you look at black babies are beautiful. When you look at them, they're beautiful. And I'm looking at mine every day. She is beautiful, right? So I think that we have a lot to work on on ourselves. And if you hate yourself as a person, you're obviously going to make the wrong choices. And when you make the wrong choices, you're going to pay for it. Or probably your children are going to pay for it. How many kids today who are mixed race kids, they're confused. They don't know whether they should go on the white side or on the black side. Right? They're confused. They're messed up. Right? So that's my take on it. I don't know if I answered your question directly, etc. But I think from my answer, they explain uh, 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 yeah. where I stand. I'm, I'm <laughs> I think so. I mean, so, like, I, like, I, think, I think that think many of us, many of us, an echo. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I've got a small cough. But um, I want to say that I think that you know, I've I've seen um, my own black people, and you speak to them, and you say, and um, you ask them about their heritage, and they say. Oh, um, my great grandmother was Scottish, and yeah, my great grandfather through slavery. I think he raped my great 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 <coughs> grandmother, and so yeah, I think he was English. So <coughs> I've got like this percentage of white in me. When you're looking at them, and they're darker than me, <coughs> and it's just like we always have to qualify ourselves by white standards. I saw a billboard with a bleaching cream, you know, advertised, and I just got so like vexed, so angry um, about watching it. And I just thought to myself, you know, what are we, when are we gonna start to love ourselves, love what we look like, love our here, love our heritage, love our culture. I'm gonna unmute you now, um, Wendy, and I'm gonna add you to the stream. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you, thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you fine. I'm going to mute all of you. Thank you so and much for having this discussion. You know I am, um, like I'm often on Bijou Noir. And um, if you ask her, she will tell you that Wendy's issue is the, like, the coons and the traitors. That is my issue, okay? And my issue has always been, how, what do we do with <laughs> these people, right? Because I love my people. But when they do wrong, I just sometimes think we are way too fast to forgive and welcome them back in. And I and there are so many and in the United States, there are so many people who are doing so many things that are contrary to the well-being of all of us that I think we need to have a better way of dealing with them to let people know we love you, but you're gonna have to stay over there for the time being. Because we don't trust you to come over where we are. We don't trust you. <laughs> In our in our in our in our inner circles, because uh, you know you you have shown yourself to be um, available to do to to be against us, right? So I just wanted to say I have um, something really interesting that I've learned kind of recently uh, was an actual story. Someone who said, you know, because in the United States and in um, I don't know about Britain or uh, elsewhere, but in the United States, there's this phenomenon called gentrification, right? Gentrification generally yes, have a, targets it, black communities. Yeah. Gentrification, yes. it generally targets black communities. The black communities are targeted and then 
um, people get in fairly, the first people get in fairly cheap and then they start driving the prices up and then it's just, you know, white people coming in. And the, in, before you know it, in the blink of an eye, a community that had been traditionally, historically African-American is no longer, okay? And uh, so somebody told me they asked, they, they were walking down the street, you know, black neighborhood and they, were, and they saw some young people tagging or um, putting graffiti on walls, you know, like people's walls and things like that. And he went up to them and he said to them, why are you doing this? You know, you're ruining your own community by doing this, right? By this putting this, you know, graffiti all over the place. And, and they said, they pay us to do it. White people pay them to go huh? into the community and, and, and graffiti the walls to bring the prices down, to make it look like a ghetto right? They get paid to do this. So recently I've been seeing more and more of our folks, um, younger folks, um, saying to like African-Americans, you know, um, politically you're doing the wrong thing. You need to vote essentially with the white supremacist, uh, party here in America. You need to do so forth and so on. This is why you should do it. Uh, or Africa is bad because of X, Y, and Z. Africa needs to prepare for me. Uh, you know, kind of it discouraging African Americans from making the trip by saying, you know, Af if Africa is not willing to to do what it needs to do to like throw out the red carpet for you, then why should you go? That type of thing. And I have to ask myself: Are they being paid? I have. I just have to ask myself: Are they being paid to do this? Is this something that maybe it's generational because I'm a little bit older and some of these people, some of them, but not all of them are, you know, younger. Is it, is it, is it a millennial kind of attitude that I'm seeing or, or are people really being paid because we can't discount that. And what I've been hearing from your two panelists who are on today, I've loved like everything that they've said, but I think that we need to be aware of the fact that we will have these people amongst us who are trying, who are working for other people, right? And they won't take like a me. They'll like try to target you, Niancho. They won't, because you have an audience and you have a platform, right? So the rest of us, they won't maybe necessarily, you know, they'll go for people who are on YouTube. They'll go for people who have, you know, an audience who have some level of um, influence and they will target them and they will, and you know, I don't care how much money you have, you know, if they offer you, if they hit your sweet spot, that's it, you know? And so there are some people who are just not really focusing on money that much. There are some of us who, who, who money is not the answer, but there are some of us money is the, is the being is the thing. Right. And we will always turn against our, our, each other, um, in order to get that. So we, we really, it's really very insidious and, and, and even little things, people need to be aware of the fact that even little things like paying teenagers to go and graffiti the walls up to, to devalue their own community, right? But they get paid to do this. This is what is happening. This is the level of attack that we are experiencing, okay? It goes from the bottom like that to the top where we have, you know, legislation right now in, in many of the states in the United States about voting and other issues that affect the black community. And so, but, but when we have it, I mean, like I'm in North Carolina and we got some very prominent uh, black folk in North Carolina who are, who have lost their minds, you know, they're, they're, they're in the coon category. Sorry, <laughs> but they are. So I think this is a great, great topic, and I want, and I'm glad to hear everything that everybody's saying about it. I'm glad one of the brothers talked about the um, the big thing about you know this whole thing about black people selling black people and Af Africans selling us, and then not coming to get us, you know. And and one of the things that I want to say to people that well, well, who have you gone to get? Have you gone to save anybody? Have you done that? There, there are Africans right now who are in Libya, 
and other places who are who are enslaved. What are we doing about them? Are you doing anything about them? You you want everybody to come and do something for you, but now you have an opportunity to do something. You're not doing anything. How dare you point the finger at other people? That's kind of my thing. It's like, you know, there are, and here's the other thing about that. Let's just be honest. We hear these stories because it serves the capitalist kind of white supremacist system for Africans in the diaspora to not get along and not trust Africans on the continent and vice versa. So you have people who arrive here and all they and all they think are terrible things about African Americans. Don't bother to learn anything about African American society. But have but are but they, their opinions are well formulated about how uh, lazy and this that and the other. I'm sorry, no. That is, you know. And there are Africans who are like, uh, do they live in trees? There are African-Americans who are like asking ridiculous questions like this. Do they live in trees? Do they blah, 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 blah. Do you? Because when I look at you, I, I see them. Do you? Do you live in a tree? Right. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, we need to mm -hmm. stop playing into the hands of the people who will divide us. We need to stop doing that. And let me tell you something, everybody who's listening, this is just the beginning of it because there is a change afoot. Africans on both sides of the African ocean, and I use that term African ocean, it came from a YouTuber <laughs> mm -hmm. who said the African ocean. And from now on in my mind, it will always be the African ocean. Africans on both sides of the African ocean are waking up and we are not having it. Yep. And we are coming together in the, like you're doing right now. We are coming together in trips. We are coming together by reaching out to each other. And when we do this, look at Ethiopia, look at everything that's going on. This is, you know, Ethiopia stood up and said, we're not going to have it. We're not having you do that to us. We're not having it anymore. Um, I agree with you. I heard you say uh, we need to, that you stand with Ethiopia. I do too. I do yeah, too. And I, I love do. the fact that Ethiopia stood up and said, the press is doing this. And I love the fact that, that Huru Kenyatta in, in Kenya said, we're not having it. That uh, Kaga Paul Kagame, who is not my favorite person, but I am proud of him for standing up and saying, we are not having it. Mm -hmm. For every person who stood up with Ethiopia, you know, what I want to know is, you know, what else can we do? other than like watching and liking YouTube videos, what can we do to help Ethiopia? That's what Ethiopia needs to push out right now. Just spread the word. Just spread the word. You're doing it already. Just spread the word. So there we are. We yeah. are spreading the word. That's it. But I mean, I mean, I mean like practical, like do y'all need money? <laughs> Is there some place that we can, do you need money for any, you know, do you need money to, 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 to wage this, to, to fight this uh, incursion onto your sovereignty? Do you need money for that? Is there somewhere where we can we can donate whatever it's little we might have? It's PR and marketing. You know, we need a, a massive PR and marketing campaign um, independently. So today I was somewhere and I saw the um, United States of Africa uh, TV channel. I don't know if anybody else um, watches that. So that's, I hope Bishi Noir, if you can, um, join us, please do jump in um, on the subject. I would love to have you um, <clears throat> on tonight's show. Um, I'll be here for um, about another 15 minutes. And so, um, <clears throat> sorry, so I was watching United States of Africa TV. I don't know if anybody else has seen the channel, but I, I saw it here um, in the Gambia. And one of the things um, that struck me um, when I was watching, I was like, the United States is Africa TV, no, you know, and this is one of the ways in which we can um, actually have um, and combat that. You have, you know, Dr. Susan Tata with um, Pan African Daily TV. You mm -hmm. have um, Bijou Noir, her own channel. You have Travel with KT, her own channel. You have Perspective. You have so many of us. And like I said, now we need to get behind also our actual TV channels and to support those satellites and, you know, 
uh, contribute um, um, content, Dr. Um, Professor Sherman, uh, Professor um, Sherman Fowler, actually contacted me about You're frozen. Yep, I think she's gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, well, I actually, thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you for all you no. um, you added tonight because it really I uh, thank you and um, and please keep doing it. And I don't know if you have a YouTube channel, or whatever. But I look. No, I don't ask me anything to subscribe, <laughs> so I will do it. If no, I, I, I don't actually have a YouTube channel. I think if I do have a YouTube channel, it will be shut down quite quickly because I'm probably quite extreme because sometimes I just get worked up when I see certain things happen to my people. And, you know, you know, and there's excuses there to try and justify why it's happening, why we're doing certain things to ourselves. And at the same time, you know, when I mean excuses, you know, for example, in the US, for example, where a lot of the black men are incarcerated. You know, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, oh. do you know what? I watch Just Mercy and I cried like a child. Yes, but let right. me tell you something. If you look up, because I'm actually an attorney and mm -hmm. I do work with um, a nonprofit that works with inmates. Mm -hmm. And because of it, I have a special place in my heart for that particular problem. You're right. And um, almost month, at least monthly, someone is being exonerated uh, mm -hmm. after having spent decades, mm -hmm. decades. I know. The most recent was the guy who was accused of raping a white woman who. Yep. He, yep. He saw and that, she confessed. Right? And she actually confessed to say that she, well, she lied about it. And right? you know what? Um, mm -hmm. He gets nothing for it. Yep. I, I feel like we need to. Um, I feel like we need to really reach out to the folks who have been who have been um, oppressed by by the American judicial system right in that particular way I honestly do that's a whole nother topic but but yeah thank you for mentioning that and um we all no. need to keep those folks what? in mind and if we come across you know I believe in helping I believe in it's not just about talking but you know let me take some ten dollars and give it to somebody if I have it because um we need to we need to to lift each other up not right. just spiritually you know but also um practically Right, because some everybody we you know we just need to do this because you know yeah. both the grace of God, mm -hmm. you know we mm -hmm. could all be in that situation. Everybody in our everybody here has men in their family who could be mm -hmm. subject to, mm -hmm. to that to that happening to them. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah, thank you so much. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out here. I'm gonna get out because I'm gonna leave room for for more people. But um. Thanks for having me, and please, and thank please you. hearing the thank wisdom, y'all. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Julia, can you hear me? Yeah, I just muted off my mic so that I could hear her properly. But yeah. I, I want to thank you so much, mm -hmm. um, sister, um, for your contribution. You know, um, <laughs> it was really, really um, informative, and I'm glad that, you know, we can look at um, the way in which we are to each other and um, very important and the way in which we treat each other um, globally because there is a general lack of distrust. Um, people that generally come with the, the negativity and the lies, we tend to buy into and we perpetuate it. Mm -hmm. So therefore destroying each other. Look at what we've done with Marcus Garvey. Uh, no, and I, I say that I'm part of that responsibility because the reason why is our previous generation didn't do enough to stop it. Right, and so we have to carry that mantle because we are responsible for making sure that doesn't happen again. Look what happened to Malcolm X, yeah. Look what happened to Martin Luther King, you know. Look at what happened to Nat Turner. Look at what happened to Harriet Tubman, you know. Look at what's happened to all of our greats, all of the people to say overture. Look, look at what's happened to our great people. Look at who the main spies were for the Black Panthers, yeah. Look at our scholars, our outstanding scholars. You know, did they really have a financial legacy to leave? Did we really buy their books? Did we really support them? Were they able to leave a financial legacy? Or did we leave them poor on the circuit going and giving?
I think I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. There's a little hate. There's a little hate brigade, and I'm going to talk to this because I have to. Uh, people, you might not like me for this, but enough people, whether you love me or hate me, I'm, I'm just going to say it like it is, okay? And so there has been a hate brigade, and I'm going to call them that because that's exactly what it is. There has been um, a hate brigade that has been going around trying to put off people who are returning to Africa. Yeah, they've joined forces online and offline um, and also on the continent. Uh, by traveling, uh, they make uh, a lot of negative content. Um, they come to Africa and even while they're here on the ground, because this is even happening right here, right now, you know, they do their best to put people off of living here and encourage them to go back to um, wherever they repatriated from. Now, I, I, I want to say that, um, you know, I personally, I personally, you know, have um, um, solid information and evidence because I don't like to talk about proof, yeah, of this. And I've seen it with my own eyes and, you know, heard it with my own ears, much to, you know, my sheer disappointment. And it's not to just my disappointment, but, you know, they're trying to put people who have come establish businesses here, yeah? And their restaurants here. And, it, you know, they sit there and talk negativity. And, you know, uh, oh my gosh. You know, is this what you come here for? You know, I mean, all I've got to say is this, yeah, is that we have to become stronger together. And the message of positivity has to resound louder than negativity. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we're not always going to get on. We're not always going to like each other. I mean, I used to go to work in an office full of people that I and I could barely stand them. But I was there for a purpose, which was to, you know, obviously engage in a process in order to exchange my energy for money. Okay. And so why can't we do the same thing? Why can't we just engage with each other without tearing each other down, breaking each other down um, to, to do that? I mean, there are so many even mining opportunities, mineral opportunities, agricultural opportunities, um, so many business opportunities. Every kind of opportunity is right here. But the problem is, is that we are an opportunity because we can't, we, we got to work together. We can work together. We can work together. This is the thing, we can work together. If you can work with people who hate your guts, your very existence, what if you... welcome. Oh, hey, sis. Hey, Blacks and Sister. How you doing? Hey, um, uh, thanks for coming to the show. And one thing <clears throat> I, and one thing I, I'd say, I 100% agree. Black Lion. Black Lion, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, until Black Lion jumps in, I'm, I'm sorry. Go, go into news. I don't know if you're having trouble hearing me. Um, no. Sam, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you loud and clear. I can hear you also. Mute him. Um, Joseph, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? Okay, it looks like we're having a few technical glitches after that little speech. Oh, yes, you're back. Lovely. Are you back? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, can I, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay, let me, let me clear. Mm -hmm. uh, no, as I was saying is... Hmm? No, just go ahead. Go ahead. We can hear okay. you. We can hear you. Sorry, oh, okay. Blacksit family. These are the wonders of modern technology. Um, uh, Black Lion, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yes, loud and clear. Can you hear me? Okay, okay. Um, Joseph, can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, so, um, okay, I want you to contribute to this. Right? This is the last question of the show. Does self-hate contribute to us being enemies of the race? Oh, God, yes. Oh, yes. And if that... it does, how, how can we overcome it? Well, that's the, well, personally, that yes, that yeah, yeah self hate and self denial is, I'll, I'll be honest with you, is one of the biggest cancers in literally in the African world. It is, 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 is worse to me, it's almost worse as racism because the sad part is, like, I live in, like, I live in America, and this, and what I realized is it was so crazy to me, even to this day, after 400 years, after so many books on African history and knowledge and all this, and what the scholars and actors have been doing for us, 400 years later, we still deny. Hell, we still deny that we're African, and it's and it's it's so crazy to me. We will deny. We will literally. We will want to be. We want to be uh, Native American. We want to be, or we want to be European, or any or any any type of DNA we have in our in our ancestry because of slavery. We'll accept that as a, a badge of pride that our African ancestry was damn near is ninety percent of our DNA. The self hate in, in America and the self denial is so bad. It, it, it it's sickening. I, I, it's still so shocking to me. Everybody's like, especially in our community in, in America, everybody's like wondering like some type of mystery is how's every other culture, every other race is doing better than us. Cause it's like, cause I'm like, cause they love and you, they love and respect each other regardless of their differences or their economic or political backgrounds. They put race first. It's, it's really just common sense. And it's like, I, I you would as like, and was so sad. Like I'll be honest with you, and, and we're barely admitting in the 21st century that we're barely admitting that we need a black family again. We're barely admitting that. We're barely like hell, women, especially women in our community. They're barely admitting that feminism, feminism is not is not what is, how is it helping black people. And I will tell you that it, the, the self hate and self denial is the only time. What what really upset me about these kind of issues is that the only time I saw I ever saw us as African Americans except being African personally is when Black Panther came out. That personally pissed me off because, like, you pretty much said, "F your ancestors, F their struggles, F what, um, um, F what they've been through, F their language and culture." You want to complain white people took them from you, but we put no effort into getting it back until a goddamn Marvel movie came out that was based on African culture and, and civilizations. <laughs> Everybody want where Josh East African dances, bring the white girls in the movie theater, and then she comes out looking like. Uh, Kuta Kente's wife and stuff like what the heck is this? You're on point, my friend. On point. And, <laughs> that's and, true. That's and, true. Like, and, and we're so crazy, we normalized it. But then, next thing you know, when the hype went down after Black Panther came out, everybody went back to being niggas or back to being just plain old Black Americans or whatever. They like so y'all only African when there was a goddamn Marvel movie coming out. I can't. That's like I can. That's like a Chinese man. Hey, being Chinese for forty years of his life, he watches Answer the Dragon. Next, you know, he wants to be Chinese more than any other Chinese person who accepted who he was before that. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, we just use the N word. That's cool. We don't yeah. use the N word, okay? That's thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Continue. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I know it is so hard, but yeah, it's so ridiculous to me. And it's like, are you are, are, are we serious right now? It took a Marvel movie to love who your ancestors once were. It, it like it, it took a Marvel movie, really. And then next, you know, when like I said, when the hype went down. We went back to being just. We went back to who we originally were low, low class, low intellectual Negroes, and 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 it's it's ridiculous. And the sad part is, a lot of people don't want to talk about this. I talk about this with my family all the time, especially my mother is like, and, and some of my close friends. America's falling. A lot of people don't want to admit that, but America's falling. And the sad part, and a lot of people are too psychologically blind to admit that. There, I had teachers who were white who told me America's falling because they see where it's going to. They kept it real with me from the get -go. They, me and other students when I was in college, they told me it's falling. It's going to fall hard, worse than it ever was. And a lot of us can't see that because this American dream mentality is literally keeping us asleep. Exactly, exactly. And the worst part, like, like, and the sad part is this self-denial and like, guard. And my thing is, a lot of people say I, I rock with Malcolm X. I rock blah blah blah. But even Malcolm X in his final years, he's. I think our best decisions go back to Africa. 
he said that, and he's the same people as I brought Malcolm X. Like you didn't, you might like him, but you didn't listen to him to what he was saying. You didn't listen, and now thanks to and sister, th- oh yeah, personally, sister uh, Blacks, I don't know your name, but sister from Blacks, it, I want to thank you so much for bottom of my heart. You made me, and my mom, my some, of my some of my friends laugh after you were voting Maya calling out England. We were laughing, we were hollering, and we liked how you were giving Africa such a good name and respect. It's like thank you. We got that that one video shined a light on Wardy Maya and other parts of Africa and also your videos too to see in a whole new form of that media will never bother him to show us. So I want to personally thank you for that. And and thank I think you. in a second, thank you. So no, thank you. You literally helped us out because hey, this country is falling. I'm starting to see even some. It, it, it's just falling, and a lot of us don't want to admit that. And we're so-called religious; we don't know when a civilization is going to end. And the brother, listen, I have started to tell you, yeah, that your reality has to be virtual. There's a problem, yeah. Hello, <laughs> Houston. You have a problem. Yes, yes. when you're virtual, the... reality has to be virtual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to come back home. <laughs> you need to get oh. out fast. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there man. ain't no virtual airplanes, my brother. When they tell you that you can't travel anymore, there's no virtual planes. You cannot <laughs> get to come and live virtually. You have to do it for real. Yeah, oh, this is man. not any, any a created universe. This is the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. you're not wrong. No, you're not wrong. And I like the way you are calling out England and everything. I want to personally thank you for that because I'm all sick of that. European persona that Europe was great. Europe is this. Europe is this. Uh, and when you call that like it is, some anyone shared a video. Oh my God! A lot of black people were like, God damn, she she roasted them badly. But that's the reality. A lot, a lot. Even some even some black people do live in Europe. Don't want to call that out until after racism hits them in the face, like hard, like hard. And. And we start talking about this in America. It's like, where do we see America 10 or 15 years from now? We says we already say it's going to burn. It's going to go hard. And, and the sad part, this self-denial of us being not being, not wanting to deny being African is literally killing us. Because I, I, I think also George Floyd. I think also exactly. with, with what happened to, with George Floyd. But not only just George Floyd. You had so mm. many. You had Mark Brown. Yeah. I mean. Exactly. Exactly. You, you, I mean, you had Trayvon Martin, okay? Exactly. And all of the ladies, Sandra, yeah, I mean, Sandra, that made me cry so much. I mean, exactly. you know, oh my gosh. Too many um, to, 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 to even mention, this is how bad it is, that there's too mm-hmm. many to mention. And the thing is, you know, Aubrey Taylor, just, you know, running down the road, minding his own business, you know, and then they have, you know, they finally decide to incarcerate a few of them and it's like and then you've got you exactly. know you can walk into anyone's front room and and then you know the brother's hugging his his his, his brother's murderer like I, I, I'm, and then you know I hear all this stuff about forgiveness forgive what forgive <laughs> who why 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 do people break mind you know this oh, is the same no. as saying you can't you steal my family you steal my land you burn my house, <laughs> and you want me to forgive you? <laughs> Are you insane? That you know, that's the there has to be another way. Right. And in fact, we can't even forgive ourselves and the things that we're doing to ourselves. Listen, I'm telling you, I heard some stuff about blacks, and I think, "Are people insane? Are they listening to this? Do they believe?" It? Do you know what I mean? I remember there was even one person. And they went to, 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 um, to came to Black City, and of course we hooked them up with Mr. Jello. Mr. Jello showed them the land, blah, blah, blah. They bought the land. And then they sent a letter saying, oh, they want a refund. They must think they're buying sweets. <laughs> yeah, is it you think it's candy or you're buying? You're buying land. You're land. Wake up and smell the coffee. Who in their exactly. right mind is going to sell their African land that they got cheap to stay exactly. in America? Are you in? Saying in your memory, like it's, you know what, you know how many people <laughs> kill themselves just to get that landing that you 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 writing and you spending money, <laughs> you're spending no. money. <laughs> but you, Julia, Julia, these are the very people. Ownership, you know, Julia. anything that you own, you have to buy the house. 
And then a year yeah. later, you want to go to the person you bought the house from and then say, excuse me, can I get a refund? Are you mad? I mean, what is going on with us? Julia, these are the very people who, I don't think, this, these are the very people with the mindset that when they come over to the continent, they think they're doing us a favor. Right? Exactly. exactly. It's that savior mentality. It's that savior mentality. Now, yeah, I want to... Yeah, just see the mentality. You, you look. Even if they had paid you millions of dollars for that land, it's still not warranted for them to behave the way they behaved, and they didn't pay you that. Believe exactly. me, the ticket, the air ticket they had to pay to come over to the Gambia is even more expensive. Well, this is a cheek, right? Mm. But anyway, I digressed. Go ahead. Yeah, no, but you're making you're making a valid point. You're making a valid point. I saw all these complainants who, who basically, you know, um, are not ready to come and develop, okay? Just be honest, mm, you're not yeah. ready to come and to change, you know, the living in the mall, having the supersized girl pee drinks, you know? I mean, we got them in the UK. I'm not like, I'm not talking about one place here. I'm talking about all of us outside of Africa. Yeah. yeah. yeah? I was, I'm, I'm in England, I could see myself. I can talk for myself going through the malls and eating all different kinds of foods from all over the world, spending a whole leap of money just to get fat, right? I can talk for myself. You understand? Mm -hmm. I can talk for myself where at one point I was wearing designer jeans that cost, you know, so much money. Why? Because, you know, the label that they sold me, I, I got sold. Mm -hmm. You understand? I got sold. I got sold. I got controlled as well because of the image and perception of that image and what is seen as respectability. But it's not only that, you're trying to buy respectability. Mm -hmm. You're trying to yeah. buy your position, right? In, in a society that doesn't want you there. That exactly. is what you're doing, right? Exactly. And, and you're just wearing the, the costume, right? Mm -hmm. Of the people that enslaved your ancestors. You're wearing a costume of the people that are still colonized in Africa. You're wearing a costume mm. of the people that are still using your people for cheap. And by the way, I watched a video, you know, when where uh, yeah. this guy was why actually. Did saying, why, why, why did Tyler Perry put his studio there? Why couldn't he put it here? Because oh, by the next way. thing you know, you know. <laughs> Sometimes they're going to make oh, yeah. chopped up charges on all of all of our superstars. Every single, I mean, poor Michael Jackson, he got so he got so he got so afraid of what was happening to him. He even had to change his appearance, right? I mean, come on, how many of our superstars you find out if they're not incarcerated or they are not um, thrown into prison? If there's not trumped up allegations made against them, if they are trying to even do something positive or do something in the media, that's what happened. I remember I read this book by these two brothers, the, the, the Roberts brothers, I think it's called The Season for Change, every a, action has no season. And um, I love books, right? And so they were talking about the fact that they had bought a, a television network. The, the minute they started to have impact, you know, um, and, and uh, can change things, and that is when they became a threat. And, and this is what is happening. Every time we start to change things, we become a threat. But what we need is our own media, our own voice and those people yeah, right exactly. that are doing negative things in our community we need to call them out i'm so sorry i am sick of the apathy call them out people want to call Preach me out for things i ain't even done Come they, they, they want to call me out for things i ain't even done like yeah. the same way yeah. they made up lies against marcus garvey put him in prison for what he didn't even do it was an fbi agent that did it anyway right but That's what did we do we condemned the poor man until they sent, they sent him to england where he, he died. The, yeah? the, oh, no, you're not yeah, wrong. You can condemn ourselves and it's got to stop. Yeah? It's got to stop. People Preaching need to stop that. feeding the negativity. Stop watching it. Stop subscribing to it. If we're going to be build Africa, we have to build it together. Listen, mm. people, you know how many factories we could have making our own products here? Exactly. Why are we taking Exactly. From China, why are we taking them in from other places? Why do you think China wants to be Africa's best? Because they know where the minerals are, they know where the fisheries are, they know where the fertile soil is, and they know where cheap labor is. Exactly. When are we going to wake up and smell the coffee? 
I I I want I want to say this. Here's some here's some harsh truth. I you like here's just a harsh reality. I I have to we have to admit this. Africa I'll, I'll this. Africans in, in the UK and in, in America have one powerful thing in common. I often call this out. We don't want to really be African because when I ask black people and regards to the UK and America, I often ask, "What the hell's African about us besides our skin tone and our hair? What's African about us?" As our as our ideology, African, as our way of thinking, African, as our philosophy, or the way we produce children, build community. What's really African about us besides our skin tone and hair? Because majority of the time, we want to be we want to be Caucasians in black skin, and a lot of people don't want to admit that. But like, let's just be real. Let's just be re- let's be very honest. Think about this. Everything we we are we are nothing like our ancestors from four hundred years ago. We're not, and we don't want to admit that. Everything like. Let's just be where we're more Europeans than we ever before in this century as we were in the past. Black Lion, Black Lion, you listen, you guys are not even any closer to your ancestors 100 years ago, 200 years ago. They, they built Black Wall Street, right? They were mm-hmm. fighters. Yeah. They were yeah. fighters. They built things. Yeah. What's happening right now to all the modern day African Americans? What are they doing? Right? They're spending over what? Two trillion dollars in the US economy every mm-hmm. year. How is that benefiting the black community, the African American community in the U.S.? Right? No, I, I agree. I heavily agree. I the, the, the sad part is, like I said, we don't. We only care about our own is when we get shot, or or racism just comes out of nowhere. But 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 to everyday life, we want, like I said, we want to be European, and we don't want to admit that because, and we we love Europeans. Must say we we despise racism and all that stuff. No, we don't. We only hate racism when it comes to affects us. We don't want to get rid of racism and white supremacy. We just want we just want to be treated better under racism and white supremacy. There's a difference. And that and that was so crazy. And it's like, look at our mannerisms, look at our way of thinking, look what we support for Pete's sake. If we like if we like the majority of my community in America, we will fight and protect and willing to die for uh, and uh let's say uh feminism, me too, LGBT. Emasculization of black men. We we will support things our ancestors will totally be against, as it's exactly. a natural form of life for us. And we don't want to admit that these things are killing us in the long term. We're slowly dying. And the sad part is like, let's just be real. We don't we 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 want to be European than the Europeans themselves. We don't want nothing to do with Africa. We don't want to speak at least one African language. We want nothing black. We don't we only accept being black or African. Because white people made us forced to accept it. That's it. That's it. And yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think you have been, you have been like westernized or like what Juliet said, brainwashed. You understand? Uh, yes. Everything African has been stripped away from you. You understand? Like the culture, the the the, the spirit of Ubuntu. Everything. What, what I mean by the spirit of Ubuntu is like humanity. All those kind of things that build a community as Africans has been stripped away from you and they gave you their ideologies, you understand? So it's it's hard for you to accept because what you know about Africa is what you have been taught by the the the, 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 the way the Europeans and, and the Ameri- white Americans, you understand? No, so no, for no, you I, to... no, you're not no you're not wrong. I agree. But my problem is like we is the fact that and I'm not denying that, but the fact is we put more effort into being like them instead of trying to be who our original ancestors were. That's my thing. It's like we got all the books, all the information. Hell, we can go to Africa damn near compa- easily compare with our ancestors. No, let, 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 let me let, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let, let me tell you something. It. Listen, just a minute. What you read in books and what you get the, the knowledge that you get when you land in the continent is totally different. You understand? Because the same books that you're trying to talk about. Is the same people who wrote those books. You get my point. So the no, most, the, 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 most of my African scholars who actually went to African to actually learned the history. But what I'm saying is, if you can have that experience for you to come on the continent, for example, if you can ask Blackzit, I mean Juliet, what she has learned of being on the continent or what she read about it, they're totally two different things. Because here you find the real deal. You understand? You experience that humanity. You experience that. Uh, a family feel, you understand? Instead of just reading things on the book and then trying to judge Africa out of that. 
You see, uh, Joseph, I will attest to that, okay? So I am actually in the UK, all right? Look, you can take me, the UK has beautiful countryside, etc. You can take me anywhere in the countryside, in a rural area, and leave me there by myself. It does not have the same feeling when you take me to Africa and leave me in the rural area. The land itself, exactly. right? I can't explain it, yeah. right? You feel rooted, you feel grounded, yeah. right? You take me anywhere now in Africa, anywhere, right? You put me there. I can tell you why anywhere, because I was actually born in the Gambia. Now, if mm. I probably look at areas in your country, right, in mm. Zimbabwe or Zambia, wherever you came from, okay, I can mm. relate yeah. to that land. And people don't understand. Mm. It's a spiritual mm. connection to the land. Exactly. That's my point. Right? That's my point. It's the spiritual connection to the land. You, you just, mm. it, it, it's not even a feeling. I, I don't even know how to explain it. So even you reading the book or whatever does not actually give you a real idea of the continent. Mm. And do you know what? I, in fact, as Juliet can attest to this, there are fruits that we eat in the Gambia, which I've not mm. eaten for so many years, that even helps build our immune system. These fruits, exactly. you never find them in the West. Mm. Right? And no, these no, are no. I will, listen, in fact, I'll give an example. Um, is it Black Lion? Yes. Yes. Black Lion, look, when I was growing up in Africa, right, I hardly had sweets. I hardly exactly. had any candy. Mm. Right? Yes. I, I used to drink mostly water. My life, everything was really healthy. Okay? So the point I'm trying to make is this. Even the fruits that I was eating, that's not the fruits probably you'll be aware of, they were actually making my skin, everything about me, healthy. Right? Mm. So I'll give you, for example, black um, lion. I remember when I was actually growing up. Now, we used to have housemaids, right? And I remember uh, we, I used to use Colgate toothpaste, for example, to brush my teeth every morning. And the housemaids... They, uh, because they came from, they like, you know, things, I'll give an example. For example, for, for me, unfortunately, my, uh, family, we were too Europeanized in the sense that, uh, uh as I mentioned before, I don't know if you were in the life, generations down, my ancestors came from slavery. They enslaved. They returned back to Africa because all my name is all English names, right? So yeah. everything about us, was Europeanized to the point that um, I was not even allowed to be addressed by my African name when I'm outside my house, right? I was not ad ad allowed that. So the way we do things at home, we were like the so-called middle class. So I would use toothbrush and brush my teeth, right? The maids will use, uh, it's not because they have to, they chose because that's what they used to. They would actually use charcoal to brush their teeth. I still and use charcoal. You know charcoal, you know wood, like when you burn wood, yeah. right? The charcoal. Yeah. They brush their teeth. And I remember I used to, as a child growing up, I used to frown upon it. I used to think, hey, you know what? I wouldn't do that. I was actually shocked recently, of recent years, to find out that the most expensive toothpaste you can get is the is a toothpaste made out of charcoal. Exactly. Exactly. So, 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 so the Europeans came over and tell all the Africans, "Don't do this. Don't do that. This is unhealthy. This is not good. You're savages. You're this. You're that." Yeah. And then they released toothpaste, right? Mm. Now that you know toothpaste made out of charcoal, and then telling us, "Oh, this is better for you." For example, when I was growing up in Gambia, I walked a lot barefoot. When I say barefoot, when I was in my yard. You know, in my, in my, in my outside, say in the front yard or the backyard or in the compound, as you would say, I would probably put sleepers on. I would walk barefoot. Now I'm hearing in Europe, they're saying that when you walk barefoot, it, it does give you some, it has some healing properties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But when uh, you see the typical African walking barefoot, you look frown, you frown, you, you frown upon them, you look down on them, thinking that, you know what? But they're actually saying that if you walk barefoot, being connected, your soul being connected with the earth, does have some healing properties. And we do this in Africa. 
Yes, yes. You understand? So in other words, they're making us strip everything about us, and then it's almost as if then slowly reintroduce it to us, right? And for yeah, all yeah. of us who have actually fallen in, into their trap with all this rubbish, right? Exactly. For example, as I was saying, if you look at the Gambia, for example, at least down the south, you guys have a lot of your animals there intact, uh, uh, um, Joseph. You have your lions, you have your thing. The last yeah. lion in the Gambia, the last lion in the Gambia died in 1953. Wow. When the Europeans came over, they killed all our wildlife. Our, our elephants, everything got killed, right? Now, prior to them coming over, we had our animals. We lived alongside our animals. They were thriving. They were not extinct. Prior to the Europeans coming over to Africa, black people didn't see themselves as different color uh, tones, thinking, oh, you're better because your skin is fairer than mine. We never had that. We were just black, right? We never had brothels, right? We never actually had uh, uh, in prisons, where you imprison people. Exactly. Right? Because it has proven today, prisons doesn't help people. It doesn't. Right? These are things that we never had. Exactly. Right? And today, if you look at in America, look at all the black men that are in prison. I'm really flabbergasted by it. it oh, yes. It, right? It, it, in it, fact, it, what's his name? I, I forgot the name of this actor. The name of this actor. Right? I forgot the name of this actor. Probably you know he's, a, he's an African-American actor. Okay? <laughs> Apparently, his dad was a teacher. And while his dad was a teacher, I don't know if I'm going to get the story right, but I'm just, just a gist of it. So probably if anyone knows, they can put me right. And what happened is that I think the dad was actually teaching uh, a child of a judge, a white judge. And one time, his dad was caught with a tiny ounce of cannabis. And apparently, he was thrown in jail for over 10 years or more. Mm. Right? destroying his dad's career as a teacher right i forgot the name of the actor i actually forgot the name. he's quite prominent he's a prominent actor mm -hmm. right I, forgot, I actually forgot his name if i remember his name i will i will tell you i will actually tell you his name right so the point i'm making is this they are there to destroy to throw the books at you regardless oh. whatever you've done it's like for example i heard about the, the the white guy who went to the black church and shoot so many people yeah, and then yeah. I, I had the, they took the guy for McDonald's. Yeah, right? yeah. That, that was, that, was yeah. that is crazy. Now, if you're a black <laughs> man and you created such crime, you, you know, the only thing that we take into McDonald's is the dead body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Right? And so for me, for us to be looking at all of these things and not waking up to the fact we're hating on ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's as if it's like it's as if Africa never actually Africa had civilization well before, right? Well before. Yep. If it, look, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, uh, Black Lion. My brother, my older brother, I actually, I've actually said to myself, I made a vow. I'm not even going to speak to me anything about Africa or anything like that. He actually believed that Africans never went to America before Columbus. <laughs> I even sent him the video. I sent him the video of a white man holding a lecture proving how Africans used to travel from the West to the Americas. They used to be you know, everywhere. Do, do, do you know what his excuse what was? His excuse was that if Africans did actually travel the, to the Americas, they would have colonized the Americas and did what the white people did. And then I said to him, that is not in our DNA, it's not in our nature. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, and yeah. to prove, and to prove that it is not in our nature, right? Is that yeah. you take a look at yourselves as a black man, an African man in America. I, I've not seen any of the African Americans taking up guns, going against white people, fighting against them, killing them for whatever they've done to their to them all these years and to their ancestors. I've not seen a retaliation. Oh, oh no, you, no, you're right? not wrong. Because oh, no. it's not in our nature. It is not in our nature. Right? Yes, yes. And, that, and that is why they take advantage. That is that why is they why? take advantage. Of course. That's true. Yeah, that's that's, true. That, of course. No, of no, course. No, exactly. No, he. No, that's very true. Like, the problem is that 
the one thing like you talk about how the, what the Europeans did to your country and certainly with the animals and 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 what Dylan Roof did. The problem is that the majority of Af- of Africans, especially in America, we don't understand the real history and real psychology of Europeans and their ethnic groups. Like we used to, while I was, while I was before I, I, I was studying the history of Europe, how it developed, how it existed, the African influences, and I, I'm telling you, if people actually knew the truth, was how the Africans really saved Europe multiple times from its own destruction, Africans will damn to be treated like deities, because the Europeans ultimately came to America at when the slave trade went when during when slavery was pretty much over at 1865. Most of the Europeans came because how how Europeans destroyed their own country economically. Most of the Europeans that came to this country are, were broke Europeans. Yes. Because their economic system was the Irish the economy. The yeah. Irish, the Italians. Irish, Italians, Jews, you mm-hmm. name it. Majority mm-hmm. of them. And the sad part is why I started and, and why I started came on recent history of how Africans from, from, from Northern Africa, who were called the Moors at the time by, by Spaniards, who, who, who taught Europeans from science to technology for 700 years of civilizations. Africans from Northern Africa saved them literally from down there from disease and famine. And we're never taught this. We were never told. But the sad part is we were never told how Europeans really were. We weren't taught. We weren't taught how how they treated their women, how they treated their children, how they ate their own. We were never taught any of this. They're one of the most inhumane people on the planet. They'll talk about how Britain was, how French was. They'll talk about how after what the Moors had did to them. Believe me. It, they were lit, they were the Africans historically taught them how to bathe. You see, uh, Black Lion, we were taught that they were divine geniuses from God, but we were never taught about that kind of history. You see, you see, one of the things that they always like to point fingers at us, saying that we don't know how to treat our women, etc., etc. They forget, <laughs> they forget, they, they forget that the African women they held actually high positions in the in in the African cultures. Right, mm, exactly. example, mm-hmm. you know, of the only all female uh warriors, soldiers, they were called the Dahomey. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Or the, or the Daramahaj. Do you know? I, I actually was watching a documentary about them when the men used to pass this, like when they're walking past these female warriors, the men and were not allowed to look at the female warriors, they have the head down. The mm-hmm. king only had female warriors protecting them, mm-hmm. right? And they were called the Dahomey, right? So then you got the Europeans now telling us, "Oh, you know what? You know, women should have rights for this. Women, women always have rights for this." I grew up among women in my house, right? Yes. And I'll be honest with you, I've never actually seen them. Have never had any rights. My grandma. <laughs> at her age at the time, she was so strong. If anybody actually wants to come into the house and mess around, she will actually greet you with a machete. That's how strong <laughs> she was. <laughs> she <don't play. laughs> right. That's how the, she would mess around. And we, we all, <laughs> we, when she speaks, we all listen. Do you understand? Exactly. So as far as I'm concerned, you can't be telling me that you're teaching us something that we created, something that we had in us. Exactly. Then, anyway, why would you want to listen to somebody who doesn't have your interest at heart, who hates you, your enemy? How can exactly. it tell you about your history? Exactly. That that's I, I, I have a saying when they start when like in America, when they start telling African stories through the European lenses or through white scholars a document docu or white or white people who created the documents, I often say, I brother had never I brother had my story never told than ever be told by Europeans. Because I, because I, I, brother, I'm sick of hearing the BS from their perspective. It's never factual, and they always want. And we, and if there is if any positive aspects of it, it's always shrouded in mystery, or they don't know what happened. It's like there's always a gap of information that's never talked about. So it's like I, brother, had never had my story told than be told by them. And no, every, everything, and everything that they have was stolen from us. Everything, education system, everything that you can think of was stolen from us. You know that that diamond on 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 the, on the queen's uh, what crown was stolen from here in South Africa in yeah. Port Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah it was biggest, stolen exactly. from here. Diamond, yeah. It was stolen from here. Yep. Everything that everything that they have is stolen. Everything that you have they have is black culture. Everything. Exactly. You see this song, this song, the the, the Lion King song, the the, the Originally, it was called Maubi. It was stolen from here in South Africa. Yeah. 
Do you exactly. understand? Everything for, about us, everything about exactly. us was stolen. The, the Statue of Liberty, you understand, it, it was given by France in order to commemorate the, 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 the freedom of slaves in the Americas. The first one was rejected. The second one, they changed the face. Look exactly, just look at the face of that Statue of Liberty and look at the feet. They are chains there, which are, which are being broken now. Has a white woman been chained before? And, and, and besides that, what does, what does uh, uh, liberty mean? You understand? Someone being freed from something which was, they were, they were uh, um, what can I say? Something which, uh, which uh, uh, how can I put it? They are being freed up about something which they were uh, 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 being forced to do. You understand? That's what liberty means. So they changed everything. Everything that, 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 that is about them was stolen from us. That's a fact. Yeah, oh, uh, I want to. I want to add to that. You, you have a very good point saying that. And one thing, as we as Africans from the continent to the Americas into the Caribbean diaspora period, had to realize is the Europeans are never going to change who they are. They're not going to admit that they are wrong. They're not going to admit what they did was dangerous. They're never going to admit that Europeans, and especially in, I, I, I was studying their culture and, uh, and their psychology, they rather die with with a with a lie then live with the truth they'll never admit that because it'll destroy their reputation and their and their status and their way of life the europeans are never going to change who they are from the th that's who they are that's how, that's how it is and as africans we keep trying to, we keep trying to change their mind or talking about racism talking about what we did for their civilization like they don't care as long if it, if it doesn't make them look good they don't it doesn't make them look good they're not going to care they what we must what 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 we must, what, 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 what we must what we must do is the way they treat us, we must treat them the same. That exactly. will change the system. Exactly. If they treat us, if, 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 if they want us to pay if they want us to pay five hundred dollars to get a visa or whatever, let them pay five hundred dollars also to come to Africa. It must not just exactly. benefit them. Whatever whatever they treat us, we must treat it back to them. Okay. An eye for an eye, fifty fifty. Exactly. So, like I mean, like, like I mean exactly. black lion. I'm just I'm just agreeing with what you said that they will never change. The the, 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 that's why I don't personally I'm, I don't agree with Black Lives Matter movement because I don't understand why should I tell anyone that my life matter. Exactly. And anyway, the real agenda of the Black Lives Matter is not what it is, right? It, it, so, for example, um, you know, look, when I was growing up back in the eighties and nineties, right? I was really heavy into the hip hop scene, right? We used to listen to um, what do you call it again? Uh, Public Enemy, yeah. yeah? You know, I'm talking about the old school hip hop, right? Yeah. And they used to promote the real black culture. And a lot of the things that are happening today, it's not something that we would actually entertain back then, right? Yeah, exactly. If, in fact, even I used to listen to like, uh, like back in the days we used to listen to raga, that's a different form of reggae. Yeah. And the loss of the practices that we're seeing today will never be accepted back then, okay? So exactly. you, you could actually see how over the time, how everything has actually changed and has been watered down, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. It, it, complete, it has been completely watered down and it's now supposed to be something that is accepted. You know what, of recent recent well, months, I just got my son to listen to some of the songs I used to listen to back in the days. Mm -hmm. And, and she was saying, he was saying to me, look, you know, you guys had good taste. And I said, yes. I said, this music that we, we used to listen to back then, We'll always leave because these yeah. are people they used to actually preach proper. I mean, if you look at KRS One, you know, uh, you know all these people who would actually, you know, they would talk about the real struggle, right? Not everything that's happening right now. They're talking about all the, you know, the H, the Bs, uh, you know, the N world, oh, yeah. and all this. So you, you know, you understand, right? There's no the, the, the hip hop has already evolved to something that is vulgar. And if you take a look, for example. Yeah, them. No, yeah. they've weaponized music. Yeah? yeah. This is what's happened, right? If yeah. Bob Marley was taken out for no reason, think again. They have yeah. weaponized oh, oh, yeah. he was music. They control the music media. This is what I'm saying to you. When I say we need to control our own media, this is exactly what I'm saying. We exactly. need to control our own music. Let's be independent and let's promote those independent artists that are promoting the music that educates us, that enlightens us the entertainments that promotes black love, that promotes black unity. Exactly. But you know what? Exactly. We, we need to have a whole 360 degree mind revolution. Exactly. No, you're 150% correct.
like the like the sad reality is like what but his but there was there was a blessing in disguise like when I mentioned Black Panther Black Panther movie one thing it did one thing it did do I'm happy it kind of did it awakened an inner African and and then in the black community that and that that's been that's been dormant for 400 years because I heard like in, in America there are times like black people we went to see that movie two or three four times or five black people really love that movie. <laughs> But uh, everybody said they love the music, love the dancing, they love this. Like, ah, so there is an Aaron African with you that's still there. He used these something for it to come out. And what a lot of black people say they liked about it is that there was it was culture, it was family, but, but, we but, had but, symbolism of power. We had if you take, we were hood if, rats or nothing. We were but if you take a look at this uh black lion, right? Yes, the African culture actually evolved to what is the African American culture today. Right. If you look yeah. at a lot of your music, etc., it derived because what happened? It's just, it's just, uh, they just, it just, I think, evolve, yeah. right? Because you have to look at your ancestors. They, you know, in America, they used to have. In fact, they did ban the talking drum, right? Yeah. In, yeah. We, which we still do have. We have the talking drum in the Gambia. So the, 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 everything has evolved because the slaves used to actually communicate with the drum. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's like the oldest instrument in African history. Like, well, that's like, it. Yeah. Well, that's it. And then, and then it evolved. Now, if you, for example, sometimes when I listen to certain music, when I listen to some of the beats, if I have to actually make it play faster or slower, I can actually tell you that this, this is a, I, I know of this kind of uh, uh, drumming in Africa, somewhere in Africa. I've heard it before. Yes. Right. It just only evolved. They're, they're yeah. Frequencies, not just the beat. They're playing with the frequencies. And that's another thing. We're not aligning ourselves with high vibration and high frequencies. And that's we're true. We're not doing that's this. That's very true. That's one thing. We're, we're not You're doing absolutely this. right. No, you're absolutely right. That's one thing a lot of people understand is like, at, like just African culture alone. This has been proven by, by European scientists. African culture, even the spiritual systems, are all based on the science of nature, literally. Everything okay. from biology to chemistry to physics to psychology. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Everything was, it was really it. based on the science. Like as as uh it is. yes, that, that that's what's so amazing about it. You can really like everything. As much as a lot of us Africans, African Americans in, in America deny being African, it's like y'all sure move like them. You sure you listen to the same circadian rhythms like them, you still have some of their habits. Exactly. But you can you can't deny that biology and psychology. Exactly. You still act through it. You still go through it. So that's exactly. what I'm saying. Like, and so yeah. Exactly. So that's what I'm. So, so that's why I'm so glad in the way Black Panther did came out because they explored the inner African that's been sealed, that's been dormant with us for years. But it took something like that to make a, a pre, at least a see something that's African in a decent light. Because that after that movie, a lot of African Americans. Went to, went to these scientists of African ancestry where they test your DNA to see what part of Africa you're from, and and it skyrocketed that it, it skyrocketed because now they was not black people were saying, what tribe am I from? What part of Africa my ancestors come from? What's what's my name? What's this and that? And, and next thing you know, you saw African Americans. I you can go on YouTube right now, go on and want to see African Americans get their African ancestry test. They have they literally cry, man and woman. They will cry because. They've been called black for so long, they forgot what says, oh crap, I'm Evo, I'm Hausa, I'm Mende, I'm Wolof, I'm this. This is my real ancestral identity. I never knew I had. And a lot of them start crying because like they we didn't realize how much how Europeans took from us. We we don't we didn't realize until we're like, wow, this is real my ancestral name. These are what my ancestors were. I'm not just I'm sorry, I'll say this one time. I'll, I'm not a nigga, I'm not black, black, I'm more than that. I'm wow. I'm more than I was told. Thanks to this, this corrupted country, and so and like so. This is. I mean, I don't even know. So this is it's, it's revolutionary. I've got, you this, right? I've got to ask you this, Black Lion. Right, one of the enemies of the race is the N word, and I don't care if you don't like me for it, my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've got to tell you this. Yeah, I yes. find it to be one of the most divisive, destructive terms and 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 the way we denigrate our women women are yes. under attack black women listen i can tell you as a black woman am i under attack yes hell yes <laughs> oh no no you're yeah. no you're not wrong you're you're not wrong because 
the, like the sad truth You know how many of my sisters are under attack, especially the yeah. ones that aren't afraid to speak out, the activists like me. You know, there was one lady called Sasha, she got shot in her head. They were trying to say, I'm like, listen, there ain't no such thing as coincidence. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah? Yes. How she shot in her head. Yes. You understand? You know, and, and, and she right. was there in South London at a party. How does that even happen? You know, my, my point is, you know, I don't even know how she's, I asked a friend the other day to, to do a check because she was in a coma. I, and I, I know anyone knows about how well Sasha is recovering, please, please, please get in contact with Blacksit Info um, at blacksithome.com. I'll put the, um, I'll put our email address out so you can contact us um, as well. But, you know, this is what I'm saying, right? Is that music, yeah? Let me explain something to you. Who controls your culture controls your life, okay? Who controls your music controls your mind, yeah? Who controls your education controls your future, yeah? Exactly. Who controls your exactly. money, right? Controls mm -hmm. exactly. your ability to live or die. That, okay? That's the whole truth. Right? right? That's right the whole truth. I'll give you an example, right? No one can tell me anything about my house. I built it. I live here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No mortgage company is going to come and foreclose. No rent um, landlord is going to come and tell me to kick my house. I built it. Is mine. The yeah, land exactly. is mine. It's my home. The water exactly. is coming from the ground. I drink it, no one can cut it off. The electricity <laughs> exactly. comes from the sun. Unless the sun dies, I got power. I'm right now on solar, I'm off the grid. Listen, I'm living just like <laughs> exactly. you, sitting on the sofa, the same TV, watching the same Netflix, sitting here watching from a MacBook, thank you to Mark up, right? And you know, so many more people that have supported and helped us, I'm, I'm here. Exactly. And, and so exactly. can you. People got lots of land. You know, for little or nothing, I swear down, I am not lying. And the no, same no, people no, no, that no. have got lots of land <laughs> turn around and try to stab me in my back by telling lies about how the land papers weren't there when the land papers are there. There's not oh, one exactly. person, not one person, not one person can say that they haven't got their land or that they haven't got their land papers or even seen a copy of it if the originals are here. They still got access exactly. to come and get them. Exactly. Yeah? Um, Don't let no one no, lie to exactly. you. Right? <clears throat> oh. we're, trying to, we're trying to empower you to have freedom. 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 Exactly. Come and exactly. listen to the beat of the drum. Right? Come exactly. and eat mangoes and come and eat drink baobab and suck baobab <laughs> like it's sherbet and eat kaba and, you know, have beans and cassava. Right, come and come and eat fufu and eat. You know oh, what I'm God. saying? Some grilled fish, some fried fish. Come <laughs> and you know have some real greens. Pick an avocado off the tree. Dig up your own potato, sweet mm -hmm. potato. Grill it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Get that chicken. Exactly. Get that lovely greens. Get all of those <laughs> green sweet potato leaves. Listen. Come and get it. And I don't care who wants oh, to diss oh, me, diss me. If you want to hate me, hate me. I'm fast caring because I am not living in fear. And I don't care who wants to criticize me to all the lies. I am not a criminal. Yeah, my husband is not a criminal. We ain't got nothing to go and steal from each other. We have our own money. Everyone has tried exactly. everything to stop us. Guess what? We failed because we're still here. You know, anyone, uh, you want to go and take me to No, black, I'm black. not running anywhere. Exactly. Black, black, yeah. Black you even want to physically attack me. Yeah, you <laughs> want to rolling. physically attack me now. No heads. <laughs> okay. oh, you think he's joking? I'm not joking. Okay, I'm black lion. Respect that. Respect. Black, black, black lion. The point I want to make, I want to put across. Right now in America, if anything happens to America now, the Chinese will go to where? To China. Exactly. I said right? Exactly. Uh, the yeah, Indians true. or the Asian, where? They're all Asian. The Indians will go where? To India. The Europeans will go where? To Europe. Where would the African Americans go to? 
But so funny, you say exactly that. We, we, me and Ma had exact same conversations. Like, if we deny being African, where where are y'all gonna go? You gonna right. die? Like, because the sap, like I said, Amer- like I said, America's falling and it's gonna get worse. I'm saying after America's like y'all, we we need to start having an Africa plan. So- you see. You see, let me let me tell you something. A lot of people are focused, too focused on the fact that, oh, they need to bring money to Africa, they need to bring money to Africa. Look, I'm not saying that you don't need to bring money to Africa. Yes, that no, is part of it. But more than money, more than money, more I'm telling you right now, more than money. Because if you bring money to Africa, you know what happens when you bring money to Africa? It leaves the continent and goes back to Europe. It leaves the continent and goes back to the US. You know why? Because of all the imports that we're doing into the continent. Mm. But if you come over there with your skill, your knowledge, mm. and you train the young people, right? We can manufacture, we can make our own goods, we can make our, our own you. products, and then we can actually import less. Why do you exactly. think there's a tension? Why do you think there's a tension between China and, and the US right now, whereby <laughs> China exactly. is actually winning some power over the US? Because the US, Depends a lot on China's uh, manufacturing. Exactly, and the, wait, right, and and, wait, and that's what's. Let the, me say something. Yeah? Go ahead. They go will ahead. all work together to Africa. No, I got to say, yeah, this this image of enemies. Let's forget it. Yeah, it's fictional. They will all come together to get Africa. Okay, Boom. the Boom. Chinese will work with the Russians. Will work with the Americans. We'll work with whoever when it comes to coming and taking Africa. They don't have no enemies. They've got one common goal, take Africa. Yeah? Exactly. We've got to stop this like pretense. Exactly. Yeah? Because when like... it comes to it, we don't care who they work through, who they work with, as long as the face looks friendly and they give enough aid to open it up. Yeah? But that's the reason why, that's the reason why, that's the reason why I'm actually... Bring but Julia, development, Sam. We'll bring, <laughs> Julia's we'll bring, right now. And what are they doing? They're taking your prime land. They're taking exactly. your Juliet. prime land, Sam. Juliet, that's the reason why, if you listen carefully, that's why I said, what do we need in the continent? If you are in a diaspora, if you're in a diaspora, you have skills that you can bring over, right? Yeah. Bring it over and teach, mm-hmm. right? That's what I'm talking about. If you're a yeah, programmer, exactly. if you're a programmer, if you're a carpenter, you know how to do carpentry. If you are an engineer, right? For example, to build roads, for example, right? Why do we need to get a Chinese company to build road in Africa? It makes no sense to me. <laughs> no. Right? No, exactly. yeah, I'm sorry. Do, are you telling me there right now in America, you're telling me that you don't have African-Americans who have their, their resources? The financial resources they have the experience who can build road right exactly so, so exactly. again that's what the, this is the point i'm talking about i think when we when we stop to think about self oneself about me you know once i come into my house it's me and my family i close the door i don't care what else happens out there once we stop thinking like that that only then right will things change and for every one of us who have children, or who are spouse to have children in the future, if you don't do something right now, you are putting your children's future in jeopardy. That's that's exactly what Malcolm Absolutely. X said. Right? That's right. What, that's what, if that's what you Malcolm don't do, if, if you if you don't do anything right now, if you don't do anything right now, you're putting your children's future in jeopardy. I know for sure. And I'm saying this, that the day that I'm taken away from this earth, I know that I will not leave this world and think that I didn't do anything for my people. Because when I do something for my people, my children will benefit. Exactly. Right? And who are my people? My people are not only people who look like me. My people are those who recognize themselves as Africans. Yes. Right? Whether you were born in the US, whether you were born in, in the Caribbean, whether you're born, wherever you are, you were born, you recognize yourself as an African, mm-hmm. right? Then you are one of me. Yes. Because I cannot turn around. Yeah. I cannot turn around to my family now, right? My cousins, my brothers, my, and say to them, I'm not one of you. 
Likewise, in the same way, you cannot, not because you were born in a different country. It makes you, as I said before once, if an African elephant is born in the US, <laughs> is it an uh, American elephant or still an African elephant born in the US? Exactly. That's exactly. one That's one thing. That's yeah. one thing like, we can't guess, forget. Yeah. Bio, right? uh, environment does not, not change your biology of who you are. So guess what? So if, if, if a no. woman has a baby in space, does that make that child, what, what, what does it make that child? Right? A, a alien? I don't know. What, what would you say? <laughs> we're aliens. <laughs> right? We carry alien cards when we're in Africa. <laughs> right? Yeah. But like, you know, real, real quick though, real quick though. No, yeah. you, have, you have a great point about this, having, I'm sorry, having children, descendants, and leaving this earth. That's very true because like, I currently live in America, but in a couple of years, I want to leave and go to the con move to the continent permanently because the truth is, I and, and like I said, not only this country is following, but I never want my if I have children, I never want them to go through the hell I went through in this country, denying them being out, den, deny their African heritage, deny their skin tone, deny their hair, deny make them be called African booty scratches, all that stuff. I, I like uh, all the and trying to have to fight them to make sure they not go through be westernized and all this other stuff. It's like. I don't want to go. All my kids, all what my 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 children go through. What I went through. It was a hell getting where I was, just psychologically speaking, just for me to accept that life. And when I say like Juliet or Woody Maya or Dinah Stamir and other African Americans, literally they they me an interview talk about how they felt in Africa. That hit me hard because I all I heard from them was freedom, happiness, relaxation, and nation building and and etc. I don't want, we can't, I can't do that in America. I and mean, if I can, it'll be it's only to a certain extent. You see, Black Lion, that. Black Lion, the day you decide to one, go one to, second. the I day. Well. Yeah, I, I just want to quickly jump in to say, um, all right, uh, 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 I want to say a tribute to Maladoma Pachisume before I, uh, Maladoma Pachisume's family, and um, before I forget, because it's very important that we also give credit. One of the things that we are enemies, I mean, Maladomi, Maladoma, yeah, means friend of my enemy. Yeah, that's what his yes. name meant. And he was a great author and he just passed away on the 9th of December. And I actually cried because he is such a loss, you know. But I read his yes. books and I would recommend everybody, please go out and um, read his books of uh, of uh, yes. water and the spirit of spirit and the water, right? Or spirit and yes. water and the spirit. I got it in my bedroom. I'll take it out and show show you. Um, but I mean, um, another day. But he passed away, and with him went the knowledge. Now, I want to just recap on a point that we made previously when you were talking about books, Black Lion, and yes. you were talking about how we learn through books. Now, um, about uh, nearly 20 years ago, I would say 18, 19 years ago, um, I read that book, yeah, of Water and the Spirit, and it changed yes. my life. Now, <laughs> I was lucky because I had always been to the continent already, yeah? But I yeah. read that book three times, yeah? <laughs> three times, yes. and I didn't stop. I didn't stop until I met him in real life. And I was fortunate to meet him then, like back when he came for a book tour to the UK. And then I met him again in 2016. But that was more under his tutelage and his guidance and so on. And so I learned so much from him. But, you know, th that kind of um, um, traditional um, medicine, I'll call it, or magic, if you want to call it, you know, shouldn't be lost. And exactly. this is another thing. They all try to say anything African, yeah? Anything spiritual, yeah, is evil. It's crap. Yeah? <laughs> they have <laughs> herbs and shit. They have a terrible bellyache, right? And they <laughs> tore some bark off of a, a cashew tree, right? And this mm -hmm. cashew bark came out like pink almost like looking fleshy evil, really strange. And then they just poured water on it, said put a lid on it for half an hour, and the water turned red, and then I drank it, yeah? Not that I'm giving yes. any medicinal advice, I'm just telling people 
you know, what happened, yeah? What I'm trying to say is that there is so much that we will lose if we listen to enemies of the race. There exactly. is so much that, you know, we are going to perish if we're exactly. going to rely on their company to look after our health. We are it, going exactly. to perish if we rely on their food supplies and we don't eat what we grow and grow what we eat. We are exactly. going to stop if we allow them to punch our children and give them experimental um, concoctions. We are going to perish if we believe yeah, everything preach. that they tell us in preach, the mainstream sister. media. Preach. We are going to perish. I'm and, warning and you the, now, the, if we do not mm -hmm. know. No, what's so funny, you mentioned that. You were absolutely right. And what's so crazy is the majority of Africans globally we are Christian or Muslim. We're heavy, heavily religious, but we, but even as, no matter how religious we are, Christian or Muslim, we can't see like you, like you're preaching right now. We can't see this. We can't see these revelations happening because we're so blind to not accept the African reality that's happening to us right now. We're too blind and we're too ignorant. It's like we all, we're like, was like we all study these revelations in your in your holy books. Why can't you see the ones that are happening right in front of you right now in the real world? Mm -hmm. These like, like these these other races are not playing with us, man. They're, they're it's, it's getting dangerous. It's getting very serious. Because when the end game comes for us, what are we going to do if we're not prepared? Right. And we that's are why master like, manifestors. Right. <laughs> we are master manifestors. We are. It's true. I oh, am no, no, no. You're not wrong. You know this evidence. There's too much evidence and too many. How many inventions have black people made across the, in, 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 the planet? Everything from GPS, <laughs> art, searching, to, uh -huh. to the traffic light, to the gas. We are master manifestors. Exactly. Master inventors, master of creation. Exactly. We are. Exactly. Yeah, no, we've no, got it, to remember it, that we, we mustn't forget our. Our, our 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 supremeness. Exactly. You know, we exactly. must respect, and, and the man must respect the woman, and the woman must respect the man. That is the it's foundation. It, and the sad part is, it's so simple. Yeah. Though he just says, just respect African each other. Like exactly, we're, exactly. We're two different sides of the same coin when it comes to the laws of nature. That's very true. It's very, it's very, it's a very simple concept. And the sad part is the the, the one thing the the Europeans, like I said, from 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 in America, the Europeans did an excellent job in destroying our destroy, destroying our will into even having that kind of mindset where, as we have as we do right now. They did an excellent job in destroying our self esteem, our self worth. They didn't for, like they did an excellent job. It was like they can't even fathom what we used to do in the past. Even when we had nothing, we still like even like Booker T. Washington. He built the black HBCU Tuskegee Institute from scratch. Well, literally, when he was dirt poor. And we can't fathom to do that now, it was despite the money resources we got now, 400 years later. And it's like, that's how far they destroyed us now in this time, like compared to the past. And I'm telling you, like, we don't do anything now and get over and get over what we're going through. Like you said, we are literally screwed. And this, and, and this, and this might be the time, and that'll be when, when we actually get screwed. We might never be able to recover from it as we did in the previous life. And and that's just, just going, well, and that's just the whole thing. You know, the, we, it's been a great, great show. <laughs> I've gone over by an hour and 38 minutes, but you know what? <laughs> it's been so uh, grateful. Sam, you've been amazing. Um, I want to thank, don't forget everybody. Please subscribe to these channels for me. I would really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, we're helping definitely. to grow and to build and develop each other, okay? So please, please definitely go to our guest today's channel. That was Joseph Sakala LV. And please, please subscribe to his channel and watch his content. He has a lot of interesting content. And, you know, I, when, we were, when we were being shot down by our own people, he was one of the few people that went out and told the truth, okay? So we really, really appreciate him 
for being a true sayer. We need more true sayers and more true seekers. You know, I respect exactly. everybody's religion and everybody's way of life. Yeah, because for me, that is your choice. Yeah, but we have to choose to love each other. Yeah, that has to be a part yes. of our religion too. Yeah, you cannot yeah, use exactly. it. We have you to. cannot you cannot use it to oppress right. and suppress. You cannot use it to oppress and suppress no. your people. Right? We cannot. No. Right. And unfortunately, no. that's what that is what quite a lot of us are doing. But just before we go, what I want to say to Black Light, the day that you decide to move over to, to Africa, anywhere in Africa, just know one thing. What keeps you going is your dream. Yes. Okay? Yes. It's your dream. It is not the obstacles that you see. Obstacles are everywhere. Yes. Right? Now, I prefer to face obstacles in the continent that I came from and overcome them than to actually fight obstacles. In fact, to be honest with you, one of the obstacles I had to fight really hard when I came here, it was the cold weather. Because I remember going out, playing for a very long time. I played in the cold for a very long time. And then my, hand, my hands were frozen. And then I said to myself, don't worry. When I get in the house, I'm just going to put my hand next to the fire. Listen, I cried for half an hour. Wow, wow. Because it's almost yeah. as if, uh, yeah, I cried. Listen, I cried for a very long time because it's almost as if somebody had a blade and they were actually cutting through my fingers. That's how cool it was. So I had to change from a lot of things when I came over here and it was not easy, right? So what I'm telling you right now, the struggles that you will probably go over is nothing compared to the game and the game is having your uh your sanity intact whereby when you step out of your doorstep you don't need to actually feel that you're black right yeah. you don't have to actually second guess what anyone else is saying to you when they reply to you whether it's got to do with racism or whatever it is no you don't have to go through that okay so for me, those who are coming over to the continent and flagging out is because they did not prepare. That's true. That's true. They did not prepare. Right? They did not prepare. Yep. Even I myself, that I was born in the continent, when I'm going back, I'm going back prepared. Right? <laughs> exactly. I'm going back prepared. Do you understand? So if I'm not going back to have all the luxuries, the so-called, by the way, is so-called luxuries that I have here. Right? To be honest with you, you know, in fact, I can't even remember when was the last time I went to the movies. I can't remember when was the last time I went out and do something because I'm not, I'm, I'm not into this kind of stuff anymore. Right. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, uh, you know, we pass all this stuff. Guess what? I pass all this stuff every day. I don't miss them. So what makes you think that when I go to the continent, I'm going to miss all of this? And it doesn't mean that we don't have them there. We have them there in some parts of the world. But to be honest with you, if I'm going to watch a movie, I want to watch a movie that glorifies my people. Right? That's true. That glorifies my people. Okay? <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, if you're going back, ask yourself, why do you want to go back? And go back for the right reasons. And one of the things that you will find that will impact you will be your health. Your mental health will be the first positive impact. Now, if you go there as an African-American, and you're not impacted, your mental health is not impacted. Believe me, you've wasted your time. Mm. Okay? You okay, wasted we're your time. Go down minutes, okay? Two, so no worries. That's all I have to say to you. And, you know, Julia, Stop thanks it. for having me. And uh, no, 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 let's keep up the good work. Right. And let's keep plowing ahead. Right? Yes. That's all I have yes. to say. Yes. Yeah, thank you. One contribution has been amazing. You know, it's kept me here. You know, I've been giggling, wriggling, and, um, you know, kept. I, I wanted to get to the toilet about an hour ago, and my bladder is busting. Sorry to, to too much information, folks. I know. But um, just to let you know that it was well worth sitting here wriggling for because it has been an excellent, excellent show. So I want everybody to please, if you haven't already, 
Um, also, uh, subscribe to Pixpective. That's P I X P E C T I V. I had it on the screen earlier on. Please do support the brother. He's really helping Blacks it out at the moment with droning and content and filming while African Boyo is um, away doing another job. And Bling Lion is here um, uh, helping out as well. And then we also have, of course, Ayuba and Eto and um, Vital. And of course, my lovely husband, Mr. Ryan. Adrian, a deep good job. So, you know, I want to thank everybody in the team, all supporters outside, inside, and everybody that's contributed. And thank you so much, Black Lion. Um, oh, thank also you. For thank your you support to the show. I want to say a special hello to um, Africa One and, and to the lovely Queen, Queen, Queen Jahari. I do hope you are well. Lovely to see you there. Also to see Archer. You know, good to see you there. Um, Shaka Wai, hello, Queen Africa, you know. And and also, I want to say a very, very um, special thank you. Um, I haven't seen her here today. Yeah, Shaka but um, Lioness. Lioness is on the rise because we're ready to roll. I just want to say a special <laughs> thank you to her because she just sent us a donation this week, which I really appreciate. It helps us to keep the production going, it helps us to keep high quality production. And um, I want to ap apologize also for the sound with regard to Usman. We had a technical problem um, with one of the cameras. So it wasn't the camera, it was the SD card uh, that had the microphone attached to it. It was corrupted, so we had to use another camera. So I do apologize. But do please watch those little segments from Usman. I've got one more left to share with you this week. And also, excellent news, we have a buyer for a home in Taft City. Um, I have to wait for permission um, to see if we can share his name. And also, there are many others in the pipeline. And good news that the first estate, Bennett, is sold out. So they're now starting on the second estate. And I'm going to give you a really good update as to what's going on there. So don't forget to please, please subscribe to those channels. Subscribe to Biju Noir, my sister Gina. And also, of course, Shantae White travel with Tay Tay and of course um, Superstar Black. So um, Africa Superstar Black and um, you know keep it real and don't forget always watch my brother Wodemaya. If it wasn't for Wodemaya, Blacks it wouldn't even be here. So just want to say thank you <laughs> to <laughs> everybody. And also my dynast, dynast Amir, I hope you're doing well out there as well. Haven't seen you for a few minutes so you know it'll be good to see you again sometime soon. So everybody, you know, I just want to say thank you to all my brothers and sisters across the African continent, from Nigeria to Niger, from Chad to Ethiopia. Yeah, and let's all support Ethiopia. You know, let's not bother listening to what they're saying in the mainstream media, but make our own minds up because we have a mind of our own. Okay. Big up Ethiopia. Um, Big up Ethiopia. Yeah, so let's start putting out our hashtags, promoting Ethiopia, supporting Ethiopia. Ethiopia oh, was yes. never conquered and Ethiopia has never been colonized. So let's keep it that way. We know that they want to destabilize the government. So let's let's stabilize the government. That's our job. OK, so um, let's shake up the AU a bit. Let's all start writing to them and seeing what they're doing. Let them wake up a little bit. So, um, you know, big up yourselves, yeah. I want to say congratulations to His Excellency um, Adam Abaro, the president of the Gambia, on his fantastic um, uh, success, landslide victory here at the elections, and also his new um, elected post of chairman of ECOWAS. He is such a Pan-African, he's such a lovely, lovely man, and so he deserves it. And so I'm hoping that we will be at his inauguration. I'm hoping to film and we'll be able to share that with you. There's so much going on. And also there's Gambia Fashion Week happening this weekend. And I'm hoping to film. But at the moment, my schedule is full, but I'm going to try and make sure that I can send the cameraman down so at least we can get you some coverage. So there's lots of big things happening here in Africa. Don't think that we're here sleeping. We're on the ground. We're working. We're building. We're enjoying our lives. Okay? Come and join us. That's it. Come on, Blacks it. Okay, so one love. Thank you to everybody who's donated to PayPal by Bot Collective. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. We appreciate you. It keeps us with um, content and it keeps us um, creating employment, yeah, which is very good. We create jobs. We can pay people. We can uh, grow the team. So let's work together. Let's build together. 
and let's love each other. Okay, thank you, Blacksit family. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Have a great Black Lion. Take care. Thank you guys. Both of you guys. Right. You guys are great. Yeah.